already on. Told you, Brad. The guys have gone nuts. The V8 units are four rounds down with four to go. Oh, there goes one. The kid, Ryle Harris, is trying to play it safe to win his second championship in a row. He is charging. But in this series, there is no place to hide. Rubbing on the exit of turn one. Bang, there's a mirror. This is fantastic racing. Well, it's round five today of the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series protected by Armoral here at Melbourne Sandown Raceway. It starts a very busy second half of 2013 with all the marquee events on the calendar. Sandown, Bathurst, Gold Coast and Sydney. These guys will be racing hard for the rest of the season. Five Fords and five Commodores in the top ten of the championship points. Ten weeks since the last round of V8 Ute racing on the streets of Townsville. This man, Roel Harris, reigning champion, leads the point score in 2013. During the ten-week break, he went to Europe on an overseas holiday, he went and got engaged. The only engagement that's coming this weekend, though, is 31 drivers on his rear bumper bar as we get set for round five. Fierce racing at the last round in Townsville proved costly for championship contender David Cedars. Drama's here, Craig Donis and David Cedars, and around goes Cedars. So this has big championship implications. He managed to salvage seventh for the round to be 46 points behind series leader Ryle Harris. He'll grid up at Sandown with new livery, new sponsorship and a renewed focus to blast past his rivals. Well, I've always been someone that's very attacking when it comes to, to race one qualifying and, and the rest of the races, so it's one of those things that I'm, I'm going to have to keep that attack right up there. Ryle's can be a, a little bit more defensive, and which doesn't suit his nature, so... Hopefully we can uh, crack him again. Nathan Pretty was the round winner at Townsville and sits third in the championship, only one point behind Cedars, as he fights to be back in the hunt for the title. We had a really disappointing Perth, but then you know, we bounced back. It's just one of those things. If this is motorsport, we all know that sometimes it can nip you on the backside and we just got to not let it hurt too much and, and bounce back. And that's what I managed to do up there in Townsville. And I'm sure to keep that same momentum rolling on. Success at Sandown helped launch Chris Walton's career in 2011, where, as a rookie, he turned heads with a blistering performance. This is where it all started for me, for the Ute race, and um, we come down for our first race. We were pretty fast here, and we are lucky enough to win a race in our first round, which gave me the step to be still here today. So um, everything sort of just went my way, and the car was great. Everything worked really well. Um, and, yeah, we are just got to work at it this weekend to try and get the same result. This year's batch of rookies have shown they're not afraid to put it all on the line. No contact! Oh, oh. Crazy round. Elliot Barber was getting knocked around, but also tangled with his teammate Andrew Fisher. From it all, he remains the best placed rookie in seven. If he can win the Rookie of the Year title, he'll also secure an evaluation test drive with Erebus Motorsport. Erebus are going to uh, throw up either a test drive of the SLS or the V8 uh, supercar which is really cool. So for me, I'd prefer to drive the V8 supercar, so that's what I'll choose uh, if I get the opportunity. But just driving one of the new cars, it's obviously quite different with the car of the future. And just being put over in that spotlight with those teams actually being able to notice you um, will be massive for anyone's career. A familiar face, Warren Millett, returns for the remainder of the season, joining rookie Jesse Dixon in a two-car team. Having come to terms with Ute Racing, Dixon is not daunted about tackling some of the toughest rounds of the championship ahead of him. This is where the season starts getting serious. We've got some, some good tracks coming up. We've got Bathurst, Gold Coast, and you know this weekend we're running in some cooler conditions, which we're not used to, and a um, track that's not a street circuit. So you can have a bit more of a crack without the consequences. So uh, hopefully we can get up point end somehow. The NZ Drivers' Championship, the points so far after four rounds. And yes, Roel Harris is leading after so much success early in the year. But Nathan Pretty, put a big underline underneath that name because he is the four man coming into Sandown. And Chris Walton, expect him to be quick. He took out a race win back in 2011 at this event. Now, Armourall pole position man for the third time this year, the Milwaukee Power Tools Commodore of Nathan Pretty. He's looking very good once more and a thousand bucks. Thanks to Armourall. We're looking forward to this one. It's Sandown, Auto 1 V8 Utes, protected by Armour. All the guys are gearing up, and we're going to grid them up on the other side of this commercial break. Stay with us.
is your chance to win a once-in-a-lifetime V8 Ute Racing experience at the Sydney Telstra 500 thanks to the new Hawkeye vehicle. You could win flights, accommodation and grandstand passes for you and a friend, plus a high-speed lead-out lap in a V8 Ute. And you get to watch the Ute race from pit lane. Then it's back to the V8 Ute paddock to collect your Hawkeye prize pack, plus lunch in the Hawkeye tent and a tour of Hawkeye in all its glory. For your chance to win the V8 Ute racing experience at the Sydney Telstra 500, head to the V8 Ute's website. We're getting set for our second race of the weekend. Chad Nalan alongside George Mediki for this one and the boys are going on their warm-up lap. A good chance for us to check out some highlights from race number one. And George, a very nervous moment for Jesse Dixon. Jesse Dixon will be kicking himself. Quite a good uh, qualifying. We see cars darting left and right as he uh, sort of gets the car re-going, but looks like he'll be starting right from the back of this one. Lost a lot of positions. Now this is turn one. Good old fashioned three doesn't go into one. And unfortunately, Kim Jane is the man who goes spearing off alongside yeah, Jeremy Gray. He was good last round up in Townsville. Elliot Barber, the back of Wayne Wakefield, into the Sage Automotive car of Gary Baxter. And this one doesn't stop there. Michael Armand uh, getting into the side of Wayne as well. So he's facing backwards. Only completed two laps of this race and finished uh, last of the, uh, the classified finishes. Good to see Michael Armand getting his hands dirty in his first weekend. Now this got heated. Battle for the lead. Pretty versus Walton. Talk us through this one. Oh, just uh, Walton making a big move up the inside, using Pretty to uh, to help uh, slow the car down. But Ryan Hansford was there to take uh, take advantage. Teamwork of sorts. Those guys are teammates. But then Walton misses a gear, and the red coat goes back a spot. Pretty takes second back, but we know that this guy does not take no for an answer. Whack! Man, these guys were into it. That was a pretty over-the-top move, and these guys definitely will be definitely shared some uh, some heated words after the race. Yeah, they were into it. Now it continued on the next lap. Again, Walton up the inside. He got penalised for this one. Pushes pretty off the track. Jukes of Hazard goes bouncing across the kerb. Pretty's not trying to get involved in anything, but at the same time, he's trying to uh, to maintain his points gap. So we're seeing a black flag there for Chris Walton for those moves, and definitely pretty well deserved, I think. <laughs> yeah. So Hanser takes his third career win. Just about everybody going under the lap record. Ridiculous stuff. Hansford taking out that race win despite a little bit of damage to that car in the first corner. Pretty, importantly, getting second. So that's good stuff for Nathan Pretty. Stephen White, another strong result. And our series leader in Royal Harris coming home for a top five. Now we reverse the top 11 from that race, as we always do for race number two. And then things get very exciting. We're looking forward to this. That's always interesting with VAU racing. You know, we uh, we actually dig this out of a hat. So top 11, uh, you can uh, you can reverse anywhere up to 16. So we've got Craig Donison, Reese McNally off the front row, followed by Adam Marjoram and David Cedars. Yep, Cedars top three in the championship so far and looking to continue that form. Some big names back in this field, including Elliot Barber, number one rookie. Tony Longhurst, you're going to be hopping in that car soon. Yeah, I can't wait. You know, uh, really looking forward to getting back on the streets of the Gold Coast. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a really good result for me and hopefully we, uh, we get a good result for the team. We see uh, Warren Millett out of row 12, position 24, and his return to the grid. Good to see him here again. Yeah, Danny Bezadzik returning as well after that massive smash up at Hidden Valley. Jesse Dixon, probably expect him to be going for another SS Inductions Hard Charger Award. Here we go, we're in the second half of the V8 Ute season. Very, very exciting. Around Sandown, a track that's over 50 years old. We're ready to drop the hammer. Is that Harris who slowed on the start oh. line? Dear me, I thought he was going to get cleaned up. These new clutches are catching a few people out this weekend. Yeah, definitely uh, not the start that Raul would have wanted, but Craig Dantas up to a good lead from the start. Oh, oh if you go spearing off, Cedars is off. Huge for the championship. Can he keep it going? Marjoram's off as well as that Stephen White. So guys who are having good seasons off. Bush bashing in the first corner. Vogue Financial on board as Marjoram tries to squeeze back into this race. Oh, you've got to be nice and careful when you rejoin there. We have some rules governing safe re-entry, but we see the guys actually now that we're going again, nice and clean. But uh, I saw David Cedars stop there on the entry to turn three. Oh, that is absolutely devastating for Cedars having such a good year. We've got mirrors and things falling off. Here's Kim Jane hustling the back of Elliot Barber. Elliot and Kim, uh, you know, sort of um, instruct together a lot of the time, so these guys won't be giving any quarter. Off the back of the thirsty camel ute, Craig Dontis, who's part of our Shannon Supercar Showdown. He's locking a brake. Oh, it's not what you want to do when you've got only limited ties for the weekend. He's cooking him, and he's got Reese McNally all over the back of him. That's going to make life hard for Dontis. Reese is, uh, you know, showing a bit of form this weekend, so I'll be looking for him to put a fair bit of pressure on Craig as the, uh, as the laps wind down. Here we go. Tight and twisty part of this racetrack as they come back onto the front straight. Oh, McNally is looking to lay the power down too early. The back end stepped out. Further down the order, we're still continuing this battle. Fonzie Mullen 
gets hung out to dry on the outside as he tries to feed the power on these big utes. <laughs> these guys are all over the place. We've got Michael Armand having looking to make a move on uh, Reese McNally. Big lock up from Armand. Oh no, he's not going to make the corner. He's going to go spearing off the outside into the dirt. In his first weekend, a 29-year-old from South Australia making his Ute debut. Good save, actually. Yeah, he's done well to, to get it back <laughs> on the track there. So he'll look to resume and sort of, you know, get his rhythm back and, and sort of look to put pressure on the back of uh, Andrew Fisher here from now on. Hawkeye on board, looking back from Andrew Fisher's Jesus Racing Ute. This is what happened on that first corner, riding along board with Adam Marjoram. Rare spares replay. Just overcooked it, George. Yeah, unfortunately, overcooked it. Very easy to do on cold tyres. We see right behind uh, Stephen White and David Cedars getting together. Stephen having a great weekend so far, so shame to see him off the road at Turn 1. Yeah, no doubt doing some damage to the steering of the Dunlop Super Dealer Ute. And in the pits he comes. Took out a race win up in Townsville, so not the repeat weekend he was looking for. This battle at the front continues. Craig Dontis looking very strong at the moment, but Reese McNally is the man chasing him. This is the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. Plenty more to come from here in Sandown. Welcome back to Sandown. The Auto 1 V8 Utes are turning it on. And these two are going to be turning it on again. I dare not watch. It's Nathan Pretty and Chris Walton. These two had heated words after race one. Yeah, there's no love lost there. But Nathan's actually got it done. Uh, he's got done a nice move under brakes on the way in here. And he's going to look to sort of stall the car up on the exit to make sure that Chris can't get a run on the inside. So he's done, done that move quite nicely. I think he's looking, showing pace to move forward again in this race. That was a bit of a letdown. They gave each other a lot of room. actually riding with a dummy inside that car for race number two with the letters NP on it. Yeah, I don't know what that means. The cars are <laughs> sounding really good this weekend uh, with the new X-Force headers, so the uh, definitely change of note, and we're seeing a big change in pace too. Lots of lap records broken in race one. Yeah, these X-Force headers, part of uh, a number of changes. New rear sway bars for this weekend, new clutches, which is probably why we've seen one or two drivers getting caught out the start line, I think. Oh, big move by uh, Reese McNally over the top. The car was sideways, hitting those, uh, those cones that we see that mark out the inside of the corner. So he's definitely looking to put a lot of pressure on uh, Craig Dontis heading forward into this race. We know Craig has that big flat spot. So uh, Reese will be uh, just, you know, cruising in, looking for an opportunity. Biding his time. He had a pretty good round at home over in WA, Reese McNally. Brother Glenn used to hold the track record here. That got fairly obliterated this weekend. Oh, definitely. We're seeing uh, seeing that that uh, record get beaten by 1.7 seconds in race one. So the cars are definitely a lot faster. But if you look on the back of this uh, front group, we now have Nathan Pretty. So this is not only a two-horse race anymore. Nathan will be looking to put some pressure on on uh, Young McNally. Here goes Jerry McLeod up the inside. Oh, that was pushing it a little bit. Back this battle at the front's getting hot now because Nathan Pretty is starting to realise that he has the speed to get to the front. And I dare say that he probably doesn't want too much more of Chris Walton sitting behind him on that rear bumper. Yeah, Craig is becoming a bit of a uh, traffic stop up here. You know, we're seeing a lot of cars starting to line up and join this lead group. So Reese really needs to, uh, to make this move happen as soon as he can to sort of get nice and clear and pull away from the chasing pack. Such a high speed part of the track. Listen to these engines roar down the back straight. We drop it down a gear, hold on for the ride, Auto 1 on board. Up the car's cool going over there, it's a big stop here. These cars weigh 1,800 kilos, so very difficult to stop. See a lot of lockups. Reese McNally up the inside. Oh, a little bit of a hip and shoulder. Excellent job. He's got to pull it off, he's on the outside now though, into the last two turns. If he can hang on here around the outside. Oh, rubbing panels, surely Reese McNally can't hold on to this one on the outside. He's going to do it. Oh, now these two are side by side once again. Now this is aggravated racing. Nathan Pretty said he was the angriest he's ever been inside a race car after race one. So let's see if Pretty's going to give him a little bit more room or if he's going to rub panels with him. They're two by two down the front straight. McNally up the inside. Dontis on the outside. Who's going to be the bravest? McNally. Can he get the car turned in? The Ute, the back end, wants to step around on him. This is awesome racing. Walton wants a piece of this as well. I'm surprised not, but he's got that suspended points. Penalty hanging over his head. Oh, we've got guys off in the background. <laughs> this is you racing at its best. Armand was sideways in the background. Now Walton on the back of Dontis. George, it's getting heated. What a fantastic race. You're seeing a lot of guys getting good runs onto the back straight, but Reese has done what he needs to do here. Oh, we've got a replay. Ryle Harris up the inside of Adam, Mar Adam Marjoram. Yep, this is... Gets it done. Oh, Gives him a bit, a bit of a head and sh hip and shoulder. Oh, Marjoram wanting to try and get off the Pertec concrete sign that was coming at him. 
and another big lockup. So this is the very different role Harris to what we're used to seeing. He's been clinical all year. Tap out energy. He's having a bit of a shocker here in race two. And look at this battle pack in behind. We've got Dantas, Walton, Pretty. These guys are not going to give up anytime soon, and this battle's not done yet. Ryan Hansford amongst that one as well, our eighth different winner for the year in race number one. We've had seven wins for the Holden, seven wins for the Ford. We came in this week with five Holdens and five Fords in the top ten. It's been just so even. X-Force on board with Chris Walton. He's driving a bit more of a reserved, conservative race in race number two after that bash and rash and crash of number one. Oh, Tony Longhurst locks up. Two-car slot at the inside. But, yeah, like you say, Chris Walton having to probably play a little bit safe. Kim Jane, this move's not done yet. Jane up the inside of Jeremy McLeod, who's technically a local here this weekend, like you, former New South Welshman who's moved down here to Melbourne. Very, very tight now. Chucky's on the back of this. Chucky having a pretty good season this year. Man, that Pertex sign comes at these guys in a rush. Man, now Chris Walton, after having such a strong race so far, looks like he's missed a gear or something to me. He's definitely losing big time down the straight. And the thing about sand now, because this straight's so long, you end up paying for it for a long time. We don't use a sequential gear shifter like we would see in your car in the DVS or in the V8 supercars. Back through this S zigzag we go. It's pretty, he's trying to defend from Ryan Hansford at the moment. This is going to get very, very exciting. We've still got half the race to go. A quick ad break and we'll pick up the action on the other side of this. The Auto One V8 Ute Series protected by Armour All continuing at Sandown. Race number two, Ryan Hansford getting very racy behind Nathan Pretty. One thing I want to know is where is Chris Walton? He was in this group uh, when we went to the, uh, the ad break there, but Big move from Craig Dantas. He's doing a great job. Not only is he stabilised, but he's pulling away from Nathan Pretty. Now, Walton looks to be at the back of this battle pack, and this is why. Rare Spares replay. Elliot Barber, the Victoria Guide Dogs, up the inside. Oh, oh man, how's the understeer out there? Now, I don't, think it's, I don't think the trouble's over for Walton yet. There's Michael Armand oh. on his rookie debuts, put one up the inside. That was a bit Walton-esque, to be <laughs> honest. Now, let's go for a ride. This is turn six. Fast, scary, out the marbles. Oh, please turn. He's screaming inside that helmet. And he thinks to himself, I'm done, I'm safe. Oh. Nah, not over yet. Michael Armin, big move up the inside oh. as they head down in the Dandenong Road. That's exactly how that feels. He does know how it feels. Last year's Rookie of the Year. Getting rookied by the rookies. It's on in the background here. Jerry McLeod and Kim Jane, a couple of sons of former Bathurst winners, duking it out here at Sandown. That is as defensive as he can get. Yeah, that's a defensive line there. But uh, Kim Jane, old hand in these youths, he'll, he'll know that he can sort of wait and put a move on later as he moves to the outside. Talent in here because we've got Royal Harris on the back. No got... way. Oh. He pulled that off around the outside. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was incredible. Excellent move. Oh, Kim Jane has got the side skirt hanging off it as well. Bit of collateral damage, and it's not over yet. McLeod's going to have another look. Harris up the inside as well. Man, this is vintage Ute racing. This I is... love this stuff. These this guys are awesome. Lit. How did Kim Jane hold on to that? I've got no idea. That was an excellent move, and, and from someone who is a you know a vintage V8 Ute racer, that was that was just awesome. It's good to see the old boy hasn't lost his spark just yet. Maybe a bit of NASCAR memories coming back to him about him <laughs> on the outside of a big left-hander, flying down this back straight, turn six. His new X Force exhaust system sounding great. As they bounce over the curbs, a bit like Townsville with the curbs set up around here. Oh no! Oh. oh. Ryle Harris just smacks into the back of Jerry McLeod and yeah, it's done that was, damage. That was all a bit awkward. It's a bit oh. last minute. Tony Longhurst, though, capitalising, makes two moves out of that, as does Gary Baxter, Adam Marger, and these guys are following through. Oh, yeah, he's done for the day. There's definite damage to the back of the McMahon group car, and that is looking like it's going to be heading towards the pits. The McMahon Ute, here we go once more. Up the inside, you can see to the top of the frame, just locks that left. Whammo. Yeah, I'd be expecting to see Raul, ha Raul Harris having to go to the headmaster's office for that one, to be <laughs> honest. But, uh, yeah, it's a shame to see Jared out of the race. He's having such a good run so far. We're not done yet, though, because this is Harris and Longhurst getting this one done, and Baxter is onto the back of this. This is just endless racing. It's just fantastic, isn't it? I mean, that's the thing about the V8 units. You never, ever get the chance to breathe or even think about talking about anything else because the racing's just too good. Adam Ardrum, the menace as they call him, will be loving this. Only his second year of racing cars, former GD3 Cup Challenge racer. And he's having a really good time in the thick of things. Now, Reese McNally is out the front. He's cleared him. He had podiums in Adelaide and in Perth, the 23-year-old. He's looking good here. But Craig Dontis is the man with everything to play for. Oh, oh no. Oh, Brian Hansford bouncing up over the curbs. We just saw Ryan, we just saw Nathan Pretty actually get a little bit of breathing space from Ryan. He's starting to pull that gap back in. 
towards Craig Dontis. Elliot Barber on the outside of Ryan now after that earlier mistake. This is going to be tight. They're both locking up, especially Hanson. Has Hanson got a problem here? The left front? He has to have. He has to have. When he hit that kerb, it's quite sharp over the top there, and it must have done damage to a wheel or a tyre or, or something like that. So maybe he's got a tyre going down or maybe a broken rim, something like that. Hawkeye on board, route the back of Fisher's car as he's trying to have a look at these guys. Armand's over to the left-hand side chasing Walton again. So Walton's got back in front of him. These two are having a great day. Another GT3 Cup Challenge graduate. Well, he will be at the end of the year. Michael Armand from South Australia. Yeah, there's definitely a drama there for uh, Ryan Hansford on the left front. I'd say he's, uh, he's banged the wheel or, or had a deflated tyre or something like that has come off the kerb. So he's uh, really unfortunate for him given such a, a good round so far. Yeah, race one winner. That's very, very disappointing. I oh, can't even get the thing turned in now. One thing, it doesn't look like it's... Maybe it is flat, but maybe a broken rim, like we said. So I have to wait and see what the deal is with the Hawken Transport car. Oh, oh, oh Jero oh, Gray. Oh, oh. That's how you drive a ute right there. <laughs> That's ute muster style. Well, Jeremy actually had his first race in the V8 Utes with me at uh, at Clipsal at the Legends race, and, and it's good to see him as he's come so far, but definitely has learned a few uh, Ute tricks along the way, that's for sure. Now, this is the battle for second, and Nathan Pretty seems to have found something here because he backed off just a little bit. He's all over Craig Donks once again. The Thirsty Camel Ute is going to be looking in the mirrors. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, Nathan Pretty doesn't have to look in his mirrors at the moment. He's got a nice little clean gap at a Marjoram. David Cedars yeah. on the outside. If he holds on here, that's that move done. Yeah, nice work. See if try and lay the power down once more. He just edged him out wide, didn't he? That was nice. That is the oldest trick in the book. You <laughs> could, as, as long as you're up the inside, if you could park that car. Uh oh, see Ryan Hansford. That uh, his brakes are on fire. Yeah, that's uh, very problematic. He's trying to see exactly where that was. I think that's over near Dandenong Road where he's pulled up. Interesting thing is the cars actually have a carbon fibre brake duct under that uh, under that front bumper, and, and when the brakes are hot, it can actually, as long as the wheels aren't moving, can actually catch on fire. It happened to me once when a wheel fell off at Barbagallo back in 2008. So we finally see that thing; it's finally let go, and, and Ryan's decided to, to just park it, uh, headed down to the Road. There's the flames licking out from underneath. Wow, that's actually quite graphic. Can it do much damage to brake lines and things in the front as well? Uh, brake lines, not so much, but uh, definitely your, all your ducting. I mean, it's, uh, it's quite a sophisticated piece of, of engineering, so shame to see him have to put a new one in there. So he's parked over to the side behind where this battle is happening right now. So Dontis, can he hang on? The laps are winding down, and the Milwaukee Power Tools Ute is all over the back of him. He's already locked in a front row start for race number three, and they're going to call it early. I'm not surprised with the fire that's happening that maybe the marshals just want to get over there and make sure we can save that ute. So, Reese McNally, that is fantastic. 23 years old, from Perth, taking out a race win. And he's having a pretty strong season so far, looking good in the top five in the championship. Definitely is. And I've said it for a long time, you know, we're really looking to see an improvement from Reese, and, uh, and, you know, we're really starting to see that this season. He's showing good form. He's smart. He makes his moves well. But, uh, but Reese McNally and Craig Dontis, our two front row starters, first and second, you don't often see that in a reverse grid. Pretty doing a fantastic job from 11th up to 3rd, and Elliot Barber, another strong run from the rookie. But it's Reese McNally, our ninth different winner for the year. Well, Reese, early in the year, you've been challenging those championship front runners. Perhaps again, you're a threat. Yeah, I mean, the first two rounds we had two podiums, Darwin, we lacked a little bit of pace and uh, Townsville was, you know, basically just a waste of time turning up. So I'm um, very happy to come here at Sandown and finally, you know, be back up the front. You know, it's all about points now. We're sort of heading towards the pointy end of the season. We need as many as we can. So it's a big step in the right direction. There's a new sound that will add to the excitement of V8 ute racing this weekend with new headers fitted to all 32 utes. X-Force are the official headers and exhaust suppliers to the series and have spent a lot of man hours in research and design developing a product that's bound to turn heads on the track. The headers are actually a brand new design that we've done specifically for the, for the V8 Utes and we've got, gone to a larger diameter pipe, mandrel bent, uh, TIG welded and a stainless steel. So it's a new, new design and, and new product uh, materials. And what we're expecting to get out of that is, is more power and, and that great sound that the spectators love to, love to hear. X-Force are renowned for providing quality in high performance design and technology, but developing a product for V8 Ute racing durability was also a challenge. On top of just trying to get uh, more power and the great sound, we have to make it really durable so, that, so I can handle the rough and tumble of the racing. So they're pretty rough out there and when they're jumping over curbs and running into each other, we've got to make it pretty tough so they can handle it. So there's a lot of, a lot of thought and a lot of design that goes into making it pretty tough. For more info, head to the V8 Utes website.
Well, we're two races down here in Sandown and things have been very, very dramatic so far. We still have one race to go. You don't want to miss it. It's coming up after this. You're watching the Auto One V8 Ute Series protected by Armour All. This round, we profile an experienced driver who's new to V8 Ute Racing, Wayne Wakefield from the Bacardi Oakheart Racing Team. Joining the V8 Ute category for the first time this year, I must say, it's probably the most competitive thing I've ever done motorsport-wise. I've done uh, improved production uh, V8 supercars and, and then sort of, um, yeah, come back to, made a comeback to the sport after a six-year break and driving, driving Utes. And I must say, it's been a bit of a shock to the system, the competitiveness of the series. I'm really looking forward to the next round of Bathurst. It's a track where I've had lots of success. Um, yeah, back in uh, 2001, I drove with Marcus Ambrose and uh, in the development series race, I had pole position for both races on the same weekend, which uh, I don't think anyone's ever done before. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good feather on my cap. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the mountain. Wayne Wakefield, our NZ driver profile. He has done some cool stuff, George. Actually, 10 years ago, drove uh, for Team Dynamic here at the Sandown 500 with Nicholas Manassian. Oh, and that's cool. That's, yeah. that, that stuff is cool. And driving with Marcus, I mean, what a dream. Uh, back to the grid, we've got Nathan Pretty and Reese McNally off the front row. Chris Walton and Craig Dontis after a great performance in race two, coming out of fourth. Yeah, it's good to see Elliot Barber and Ryle Harris, championship contenders there in terms of the rookie and the overall championship. Kim Jane fought back to finish uh, towards the front end of the field and now has a row six start. Ryan Hansford after a race one win. What a fantastic job, but unfortunately had a tyre go down starting out of 15. Yeah, Dean S will kill you. How about this guy, Jesse Dixon? Position number 25. That is going to be exciting to watch. Now, these clutches have been dramatic on the line. We've seen stalls. The red light's on. Can we get all 31 units away cleanly? So far, so good. We're away. The final race for the weekend is on. And the race to turn number one. We're on board with Andrew Fisher. Whack! Is that Michael Armand? I think he's trying to bash a hole through the side <laughs> of uh, Andrew Fisher headed down to turn one. Bit of tie smoke for a oh. lock-up. Oh, no! McNally. Reese McNally, after winning race two, has speared it off in turn number one. Gifts the race lead to Nathan Pretty. Man, he will be dirtying himself for that. We're seeing the cars two wide, three wide, heading into the corner here. It's tight. They're giving each other a surprising amount of racing room. A little bit of rubbing in there. And there's McNally's fallen way back. I think about three quarters of the youth field have their mirrors folded in after those four, <laughs> first four corners. But uh oh, we can see Raul Harris and Elliot Barber side by side headed up the back straight. X Force on board as we ride with Chris Walton, and this is going to be brave stuff right here. Hold your breath, here comes turn six. <laughs> oh, Elliot Barber. Nice work, mate, nice work as he tries to clear himself and sort of latch onto the back of Chris Walton. We've seen the cars now start to settle down. David Cedars having a look up the inside of his teammate, Andrew Fisher. And the rust bucket, as he's called it this weekend. Sponsorship from Mindsight Fencing helping out this weekend. Here's White up the inside. It's going to have to be a late one if he's going to get it done there. And Adam Marjoram pulls out. Stephen White is back rubbing doors with Ryan Hansford. They're using each other to make the corners. Ryan's going to keep that position there. As Tony Longhurst again looking to pick up. He's done some good, smart moves this weekend. He's sort of just been hovering, making moves, and sort of taking passes whenever the opportunity presents itself. So good to see Tony doing well. He's an old Wiley racer, two-time Bathurst winner, of course, as we fire them down into turn one. Nathan Pretty, your race leader. Elliot Barber all over the back of Chris Walton as they head into turn two. Watch the way they ride these curbs. That's all that new shock package that we've had on the cars for the last uh, couple of seasons. These cars are really progressing and, and sort of changing into quite a, quite a good race car. Jeremy Gray up the inside of Ben Dunn in the background. Now, when we're up in Townsville, oh, we do a bit more bush bashing. In Townsville, Nathan Pretty said the reason why he was so fast at there is because he can use the curbs better than anyone. It's probably why he's been so fast here. Res Bears replay of the start. Now, Fisher was having a couple of scraps with Michael Armand, as you can see, in the middle of the track. Reese McNally late on the brakes, a little too late, as it turns out, as we saw him head out and do a bit of grass cutting off the exit of Turn 1. He would be so disappointed with himself after that. Walton on the outside of Michael Armand, who has not been afraid to use the door handles. Tell you what, I've been hugely impressed by Michael Armand this weekend. What a fantastic job he's doing on debut. You know, we've seen him win races in the Touring Car Masters, but no one really knew what to think. But tell you what, first weekend in this series, first weekend in the Commodore, I'm picking him as a, as a, uh, a real talent to watch in the future. 
on the 29-year-old. Uh, had a chance to test it. Winton, I think it was, a couple of, uh, just about a weekend ago with a few other drivers, including his teammate at Williams Tech Racing in Adam Mardrum. They say that they've been sharing data this weekend, checking the GPS lines. It's uh, a way that teammates can work together. Yeah, you've got to learn where you can in this series. And, and you know, I think Michael would have been pretty smart with that to see a replay. Oh, Elliot Barber and what? Chris Walter getting together. Walton on the inside of the top. Man, oh, look that at that thing leaving massive. the ground. Slots into the hole in the traffic. Oh, that was huge, Elliot Barber. Now what's happened here is, did Walton maybe lift a little bit early here? I think it might have caught Elliot Barber out. This could have been, oh, oh, that could have been absolutely massive. What a save from Chris Walton to get this thing back on track. That could have been a Will Davidson style accident on the back of the circuit. That area of the circuit has seen some of the biggest crashes we've ever seen. You can oh. see Elliot tucked right up in behind him. Oh. Not too dissimilar to what happened with Barber and Marjoram at Townsville in the last round. And how about the save from Chris Walton? That boy can drive. He's recently taken out a win over in New Zealand. It's the Victorian Guide Dogs car. He's got a little bit of damage to that beautiful new front bonnet, but took out a win over in New Zealand as he did at Pukekohe early this year. This track a little bit like Pukekohe. The fact that it's built around a uh, horse racing track. Why don't all horse racing tracks have race tracks built around them? Yeah, I'd vote for that. Yeah. Probably go to a lot more horse racing <laughs> as well. No shortage of horsepower at Sandown this weekend. The Auto 1 V8 Utes protected by arm roll. We're going to need a lot of arm roll to protect these cars this weekend. Coats high, fastest lap board. And Elliot Barber, the quickest man on the track, despite the fact that it's not too aerodynamic right now. Fastest car on the track by over half a second. It proves the kid's got speed. So he's looking to uh, to sort of get right up on the back of Craig Dontis here and make a move to get move into second. So he's our number one rookie. Speaking of rookies. This is Adam Marjoram with Kim Jane for company and Reese McNally trying to fight back through the field along with Ryan Hansen out the back as well. We've got Chucky Baxter in the mix. And this race is really starting to find its rhythm now. We're seeing a lot of the cars sort of tuck in nose to tail. We're going to see the guys finding what their cars are doing better than the others and looking to sort of plan that move forward on the next car in front. How is the big lick of flame at the back of Marjoram's car? Now, Nathan Pretty's opened up a handy lead. Elliot Barber is going to start pressuring Craig Dontist in the thirsty camel car now he's been a recent uh, ambassador for victorian guide dogs has ellie Parker, which is pretty cool yeah i'll tell you what if that bonnet comes up any further he's going to need one to find his way <laughs> around this track but like you say very very quick and good to see uh, elliot having a nice turn of speed at what is his home track he's a he's a melbourne boy he's from bo morris so he'll be looking for looking to impress this weekend and unfortunately had a couple of hiccups but uh you know as we see the kid's got speed few local drivers here this weekend and also a few guys having their first pass in a ute around this place. 13 of the drivers have never driven a ute around Sandown before, seeing as we haven't been here in the last couple of seasons. Charging back down to turn one once more. It's pretty from Dontis, but Elliot Barber's really putting on the pressure. David Cedars goes sliding up the inside of Adam Marjoram. These See, two had a great battle in uh, race one, George. Yeah, exactly right. David uh, having a pretty oh. low... Oh, as oh. he goes bush bashing off the road. Very, very easy to lock the rears. Big down change on the way into that corner. And you use that down change to actually help turn the car. But the, up, the downside of that is if you do mess it up, the car's all over the shop on the way into turn two. Things are getting very excited. It's the last race of the weekend here at Sandown. It's the Auto 1 V8 Utes, protected by Armour All. Back in a minute. V8 Utes protected by Armour All. The final time this weekend at Sandown, and this is the Dunlop Super Deal Ute. Stephen White just forcing Ryan Hansford out wide. A couple of boys who have won races this year now. Yeah, Stephen's having a great. Stephen was having a great weekend. The same with Ryan Hansford. These guys probably not living up to the the weekends that they could have had uh, either of them. So really disappointing. But as we're seeing, these guys are racing racing hard. They're racing clean. And man, Whitey up on the curve, nice and sideways. Again, good Ute style. This is going to be tight. Down the back straight. Who's going to be the first to lift? We've seen that the guy on the outside in the last few battles has won this move through turn six. Yeah, generally they've been crazy enough to pull it off. I'd be interested to see if Ryan's capable of it as well. Oh, Big the move. back end gets loose. Oh, they touch. Oh, I've never seen that work <laughs> once, and I've seen it three times in this weekend. It's been amazing. So Ryan Hansford, excellent move, and we see Gary Baxter now tucking onto the back of Stephen White. I've never seen so many moves around the outside in one weekend. We've seen Kim Jane on the outside of turn one. We've seen a few guys on the outside of turn six. This is brilliant racing. Now, Rare Spares replay time. This is towards the end of the... Oh! oh Marjoram, yeah, dear me. 
That's not on. That was never going to happen, unfortunately. It's a shame because we've seen Adam having such a good weekend so far. Launched a huge move up the Ooh. inside of David Cedars. Huge contact there too. You can see what he was trying to do. He just got it wrong. It's uh, a bit of a rookie error, but he's been having such a good year so far, Adam Marjoram. Now this is finally the move getting done. Oh, the Victoria Guide Dogs car just serving up the thirsty camel. Served a nice cold one there. <laughs> <laughs> While Harris is on the back of this as well. So, Dantas, you can watch this man on 7 Mate as part of our Shannon's Supercar Showdown, but he's got other things to worry about right now because he has two very fast guys behind him. Raul Harris, the series leader and last year's Rookie of the Year, X-Force on board, my favourite part of the track, one of the best spots to race in the country coming up. And you can watch these cars come up over the top here, like we say, down into Dandong Road. Look at the Ford, look at the way that front really turns. The car sort of moves up and over those curbs. That's one of the strengths. Holden, very strong on the power down, but as we see here, Craig Don just locked an inside wheel. That power down to the Holden probably will help him on the exit as he pulls away from Raul Harris. Adam made it racing. This is good stuff. Late in the day, Auto 1 on board as Dantas is getting very, very nervous with the series champ behind him. Yeah, that's what we call mirror driving. He's starting to watch his mirrors a little bit too much, starting to miss his braking markers, all that sort of thing. All he needs to do is keep that car nice and... Oh, stop. Whoa. Keep oh, that no. car nice and uh, contained, nice and calm, and, and if he makes it, if he hits his marks, I think he'll be all right. He's going to have to be really on his game here to hit his marks down here because he's got Raul Harris going to the inside. Chris Killer Walton can see the writing on the wall. He thinks he might be able to get a bit of a switch back on both of them. We've got Elliot Barber coming through for a drive through as well. Yeah, not just a drive through. It looks like he's having to perform a stop and go there. So, real shame to see that for our, our current rookie leader as we see Raul Harris oh. again. Gee. Uh, can he pull it off? That is such a great <laughs> little bit of the race track. As the back end of the tray steps out, nearly sideswipes the Pertex signage. Now, they've bought Armand and Fisher along for company. This is only going to get more and more exciting. A couple laps left in this one. Dontis desperate to hold off the series leader. We know how good Royal Harris is on old tyres at the end of race three. Again, now, let's see how Michael Armand goes on the outside. Oh, it's going to be close. Don't hit each other here, boys, please. Wow, Walton, that was conservative stuff. I think you knew the suspended sentence. You didn't want to go pushing Michael Armand around there. Well, Walton and uh, and Ryan Hance were the teammates, and Walton knew what happened when Ryan mounted that curb in the second race. So he knows that he needed to be careful there and sort of choose and pick his oh. battles. We see, uh, oh, the kids straight through. <laughs> a little bit of a love tap just for your just for your consideration. Thank you, boys. Oh, now who got the power down quickest here? It looked like Dontis might have just quickly got his boot in a little bit better, got better drive, and he'll be on the outside, but. Hey, being on the outside seems to be the thing to do at Sandown this week. Drag race down the front straight. The Thirsty Camel is just going to be edged out, I think, here by the tap-out energy. Ryle Harris, you... Yeah, Ryle Harris, two good under brakes. Yeah, that move's done. So nice, nice calm, classy racing from our, our current series leader. But again, Michael Armand, you know, we said he's the man to watch. And what an awesome job he's doing buying into this battle uh, up here with guys like Craig Dantas, Chris Walton and, and Ryle Harris. He is in there amongst some of the most experienced ute uh, races we have here this weekend. And if he can hold his own here, he can hold his own against anyone. Two laps to go. Make that about one and a half laps. The guy at the front, it's the Milwaukee uh, Powered Tools car. Here he is right now, as a matter of fact. I think we'll check in with him because he's just absolutely brained it this weekend. He's probably already checked into uh, Thailand because that's where he's going next week with his family on a bit of a family trip, Nathan Pretty. Unfortunately, his daughter's been a bit crook, actually, had an operation, so he's taken the whole family away next weekend. The whole family's here as well, including his sister, Nicole, who's helping out with the race team. This battle for second is far from over. And what a fantastic job that, uh, that Nathan's done this weekend. You know, he's just been, been, been fantastic. He's sort of got through a few battles. And in this race, with guys like Craig Dontis and Raul Harris battling away, it's just allowed him to sort of ease out a nice little gap with two laps to go or one lap to go now. Uh, he's going to be, uh, you know, looking to sort of conserve those tyres and make sure he doesn't make any mistakes. Speaking of tyres, the same set of tyres he's had on all weekend. Didn't even use the spares. That is good. And he didn't even mind the fact that Chris Killer Walton took out the dummy in race two. He said... <laughs> <laughs> he had his own quip. He said, I didn't realise we're allowed to have two dummies in the car. <laughs> That's standard, uh, standard <laughs> Nathan Pretty. If you know him well, he's a bit of a joker and uh, a really good bloke to be around. But, man, when he gets behind that wheel, it's all business. Last chance, last lap, and this battle for third is on. Dontis, Armand, Walton. Who's going to take this one out? 
Oh, it's a fantastic battle. And as we know, uh, Chris Walton, not backwards in coming forwards <laughs> ever in his whole Riyadh Youth career. So if he's close enough, he will make a move on Armin in front. One on debut back in 2011 at this track has been turning heads ever since. In my old car, let me <laughs> might, say. Might I add, <laughs> says George Medici. Tell you what, Paul Stokel's going to have a busy day. Our driving standards observer is just going to be up all night sorting the mess out from this one. Now, Roel Harris has a suspended sentence, or not a suspended sentence, but a decision pending at the end of the weekend as well after what happened in race two with Jerry McLeod. But this guy up front. All class, hasn't he? I mean, it's been a few times I've been able to call this guy to, uh, to a good weekend and... And he's done it again, you know, fantastic effort, great qualifying, and he's just built on it from there. Hasn't made any mistakes as he crossed the line and takes the win for race three. Checkered flag for race three. Nathan Pretty takes out another strong win. It's almost the exact same weekend that he had in Townsville, a second in race one, and then taking out the final race of the weekend. He'll be very, very happy about that. The rest just came flying home. Armand home in fourth. What a great job. Chris Walton back there in fifth, but that was very good stuff. And Reese McNally did a good job to recover to eighth. So Pretty takes out the round win and a new rivalry has formed between himself and Chris Walton. Raul Harris sneaking home onto a podium today, but there is still that overhanging penalty potentially from race number two. So this is how it was done. McNally firing himself off in turn one. Very, very disappointing for the Stratco Commodore. And that's all the opportunity that Nathan Pretty needed. Nathan, it was certainly a mixed weekend for you, but at the end, you've had the last laugh. Yeah, that's right, exactly. I mean, there might have been a, a little bit of dummy spitting and all the rest of it, which I'm, I'm happy to have that tag. There's no drama at all, because I think, you know, at the end of it, someone else might have um, had to suck on the dummy rather than me. To get that round win, uh, backing up after Townsville, it's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, look, it is, and it's credit to the guys. I mean, we didn't test much over the first couple of years, and, and now we've actually pulled our finger out and started going testing and finding a few more little tweaks and different things, and it's obviously paying dividends. So really all the credit to the guys back in the workshop. To the NZ Championship points, and Royal Harris's lead is just being edged away now. Pretty serious, McNally. Jeez, it's close, and it could be even closer if Harris gets that penalty. Royal signs of a true champion to come through as you did this weekend and end up on the podium. That's amazing. Yeah, we did what we could. Uh, the new clutches are a bit of a pain to get off the line, so we had a stall. I think it's the first time I've stalled on a race grid since I was in go-karts, I think. So, uh, you know, we battled way, our way back through in race two and uh, got involved in an incident, uh, which is still under appeal. But, um, you know, we finished third for the round. We did the best we could, but, you know, we don't really have the speed until everyone's tyres go away in race three, so we need to find a bit more car speed this year if we're, uh, if we're serious about winning the championship. We're still leading it, but um, Nathan's feeling well and surely eating away at my leads. Yes, he has. Now, let's go to the SS Inductions Hard Charger Award and for passing 11 cars in race number two. This week, it goes to Fonzie Mullen. The Yokohama rookie point score, Elliot Barber, has a very commanding lead and is one step closer to a prestigious test drive with Erebus Motorsport. So Nathan Pretty goes back to back in the Utes. Fantastic work. And the next time you see us, we'll be at the mountain. How exciting is this? Round six of the championship. It's coming to you from Bathurst in October. Well, on behalf of George Medicki, this is Chad Nalon saying goodbye from Sandown. The championship's getting closer and you don't want to miss the next round. round of the V8 Utes, Nathan Pretty closed the championship gap, but it wasn't without some drama. Oh, Walton making a big move up the inside, using Pretty to help slow the car down. Walton up the inside, pushes Pretty off the track. We've got to have a go at these things, and uh, it made it interesting. It might have been a, a little bit of dummy spitting and all the rest of it. He wasn't very happy with it at the end of the race, of course, which I'm, I'm happy to have that tag. There's no drama at all, because I think, you know, at the end of it, someone else might have... Um, had to suck on the dummy. Now Pretty has his sights set on the championship leader. But first, he has to take on the mountain. Oh, oh, big crash. Backwards into the sand. Oh, it's a heavy hit. Well, it's that time of the year to let the Ute boys loose here at Mount Panorama, the latest round in the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. Now, history is calling for Nathan Pretty this weekend. He's won the last two rounds in a row, and if he wins this weekend, he becomes the first man in Ute history to win three rounds of the series in a row. Plenty of ill temper and bad feeling at Sandown in the last round, blows between drivers, arguments as well, and plenty of panel crunching on the track. A post-race penalty, too, for the championship leader, Ryle Harris. He's had his points margin trimmed coming into this weekend. It's a track he's done well on in the past, but he needs to respond if he's going to go back-to-back -back in the championship. 
Defending champion Ryle Harris is more used to leading the pack rather than hunting it down, but after dramas on the grid in race two at Sandown, his weekend suddenly turned pear-shaped. I've stalled on the grid, my own fold, and coming back through the field, I just got a little bit impatient with a guy and I uh, went for a move. He went to block me and it just never ends well for, for both parties involved in that, in that situation. So, you know, we've, uh, we've moved on from that and we're at Bathurst, you know, one last two years here. Uh, pretty confident going into this weekend. We haven't quite had the car speed we've wanted over the last couple of rounds and uh, I'd hate to uh, lose the championship gradually over the last couple of rounds just from a lack of car speeds. The man of the moment, Nathan Pretty, seemingly can do no wrong after racking up his second straight round victory, which puts him just 11 points behind Harris. Perhaps the only thing that might slow him down is a broken toe suffered while on holidays. But with a late season charge for the title in his sights and years of experience racing at Mount Panorama, Pretty isn't about to give an inch. It's just going to be a, a smart, headstrong driver that's going to win at the end of it. Or, you know, there's still a few more rounds to go and a lot of races and we go to some more, some more street circuits later on and so on. So it's going to be maturity and me being 40 plus now, I think I might have the right head on my shoulders to get these young blokes. But Pretty's successful streak hasn't come without a few fiery moments, including an intense duel with Chris Walton, who makes no apology for his aggressive driving. We've both got completely different backgrounds there with, with, um, with Nathan, and um, you know I like to get in and have a go. He's not so much that he just wants to keep it all straight for the next round. Um, I like to get in and muscle it around a little bit. It keeps it more interesting and it makes me enjoy the sport. Some people just um, take it bad side, I suppose, more than others, but. Um, but no, that's the way it goes, and um, who knows what happened again this weekend. While championship points are important this weekend, experienced campaigners know that simply conquering Mount Panorama is a feat in itself. To be fast here, you have to be brave, and um, so you've sort of got to leave it all behind. And you just, uh, when you put your helmet on, you've just got to say, "Well, you know what? Uh, we're at Bathurst, and uh, yeah, we've got to make it happen." You come down the hill, and it's. Uh, it's dangerous, it's fast, uh, and then once you get on down Conroy Strait, it's exhilarating. It can be pretty tricky because you've got someone two inches behind you, someone two inches in front of you. There's no, there's no chance of just sitting back and just saying, I'm going to have a cruise. It's courage, you know, you've got to get out there and have a, a good hot go. You've got to find out what the car's doing. You can't afford to muck around too much. So, you know, you're just in awe of it as you're driving around and then you forget how fast it actually is. You know, it really gets your heart rate up. You, know, you go skipping across the top there at a couple hundred k's there's always something happening and it's, it's very, very exciting. For the rookies, it's a chance to perform on the grandest stage of them all. Doesn't matter how many times you play it on PlayStation or watch it on uh, YouTube, it, it just doesn't prepare you. When you walk it, it's just the first thought is how am I supposed to drive a car around here. It's so narrow and so steep. Definitely nerves, probably a little bit scared. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a few wild rides and a few moments throughout the weekend. It's a track I've played on Xbox and R Factor on the simulator and everything coming into this round to walk it and see the undulations that the TV doesn't quite capture. It's, it's mammoth. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out there and, and drive the car and just take in the sights through it. And it's all you can do and try to drive quickly. Us rookies have been holding our own uh, the last few rounds and a track like Bathurst, the guys with a lot of experience really get a bit of an advantage on us. So. It'll take a while to get our heads around it, but I think youth and a uh, bit of a hunger will uh, pull us up in the front of the field. Gee, it is close in the NZ Drivers' Championship. Three blokes all within a shot. Ryle Harris, that lead has been slowly slipping away. Nathan Pretty was so strong at the last round, and David Cedars is still in with a shot after showing some good speed over in Western Australia. And he's our armour old pole position man. Is David Cedars in the rust bucket, as he calls it. The mine site fencing Australia, number eight. Our pole position man, and $1,000 richer thanks to armour old. His first pole position here at Bathurst. Oh, he did claim one earlier this season, though, over in Perth. Nathan pretty excluded from qualifying. We'll tell you a bit more about that after the break, as all eyes are on the Utes. Not that one. These ones, the Auto One V8 Ute Series, protected by armour old, ready to go racing. Round, we profile one of the original nine drivers to compete in the series when it began in 2001, Noel Edge. He also racks up 150 race starts this weekend. 
Yeah, look, I consider myself a bit of an Aussie battler in the category. I do all the mechanical repairs, I do all the car setup, I do the crash repairs back in my workshop. I, uh, I Anything that has to happen to the car, I generally do. Uh, I've got my loving wife who uh, support on the radio because there's got to be a second person. Uh, we're a two-person team, the only one in the category. We almost come uh, always in the back. 10 or 5 or whatever it is and, and it's hard work but you know I think I'm a winner every time I get here you know, and that's, that's how it goes. The Auto 1 V8 Ute Series protected by Armour All around this beautiful Mount Panorama circuit 6.2 Ks in total. Aaron Noonan alongside myself for this one the boys are out on track gearing up for race number two a chance for us noons to have a look at race number one always action-packed and david cedars on pole chad with stephen white alongside full field of 32 firing down towards hell corner but it was the white dog who got the lead and he's been in really good form in the last couple of rounds he led them through turn one and everyone was pretty well behaved xbox turn one with their beautiful green grass as we fly over the top now this was a pretty good battle between white dog and Cedars. Cedars worked him nicely. He thought he might be able to go late on the brakes, but how late is Stephen White? Maybe that's all those years of open wheel experience that gave him the chance to hold on around the outside. Knew what to do there, just held the outside line, but Cedars wasn't done. He came back on the next time around to just change tact. He thought, well, why go the long way here? Because it didn't work last time around. So he put himself on the other side of the road for this time, pinched White to the kerb. He was able to use some of the grass, some of the kerb, some of the bitumen and get through to the lead. One man fighting his way from the back is Nathan Pretty. The Milwaukee Power Tools car trying to pick a few off and boom, Danny Bazadzik, a big scrape on the wall. That is a new car after a huge crash in Darwin. Good news when you're a smash repairer, but this was Jared <laughs> McLeod. Three wide with Adam Marjoram and Wayne Wakefield, but it was McLeod who got loose on the grass and ended up pirouetting on pit straight. Noel Edge, he might need to fix oh. this one himself because he bumped it into the fence at the top of the mountain. And then... Not it got worse. Fast. Yeah, wasn't it? Look at this massive moment. Just, I reckon, clips the back of Cam Wilson and just flying backwards through the chase in anything is never fun. I know these boys were at the Denny Ute Muster recently, but that is not the kind of Ute Muster skills you want to see out of the Auto 1 V8 Utes. David Cedars, after taking control of the race lead, turned that into a race win. And he's fourth here at Mount Panorama, tying Ryle Harris. So Cedars starts the weekend with strong points. White, Fisher, Dixon, Jeremy Gray... And Gary McDonald back this weekend, rounding out the top ten. Well, David, a lot said about the championship battle. We haven't spoken to you as much, but you're not out of it, are you? Oh, definitely not. There's lots gone down this weekend. So, like I said, it's Ute racing. Anything can happen and usually does. So they have wound their way down from the top of the mountain, including Noel Edge, who is back for race number two after that huge moment. At the end of Conrod Strait, it was massive, all right. Kim Jane, race number 250 this weekend, off the front row alongside Chris Kilowalton. And, of course, this is a reverse grid, so the top nine have been inverted. And David Cedars can't blame anyone but himself because the winner of race one is the man who draws the number of how many cars that we spin around on the grid. So Kim Jane goes to the front. Tony Longhurst, the two-time Bathurst 1000 champ, starting from 16th. It's his final weekend in motorsport. Nathan Pretty got from 32nd to 17th in race one but he's got a lot of work to do to keep going forward and just try to stay in this championship fight. Another interesting name that popped up towards the back of the field, Troy Wilson, who is an ex-Eagles player in the AFL, has also raced Speedway and Motocross. But that is the man we're watching. Car number one, the tap-out energy ute of Ryle Harris. He was 19th in qualifying, a lot of work to do in race number two. The reverse grid race for the Auto 1 V8 utes, protected by Armour All. We're away. These new clutches are so hard to get off the line, but that is a great start for Kim Jay and the experience. The cream rises to the top and Craig Dogt is in a second, so Walton drops back one. Kim Jay's just given himself a massive margin. This is in the mid-pack with Ryle Harris. Reigning champ is struggling for car speed this weekend. He's getting really, really frustrated. He needs to keep an eye on things. We're on board the Vogue Financial in-car. Well, it's not in-car, it's on route, <laughs> isn't it, really? With Nathan Pretty as he drag races with... Tony Longhurst, but it's Kim Jane to the lead. Craig Donis second, and Donis is one of the drivers who went to the Denny Ute muster before this weekend. It's paid dividends. It's working for him so far. A few of the boys went down for the sixth consecutive year, and look at this Milwaukee Tools Utes on the outside. He's stuck up behind Tony Longhurst at the moment. The approach to the cutting. 32 Utes try and cram them all into one. Andrew Fisher pushing Jero Gray, who had a personal best in qualifying so far this weekend, trying to push him up the mountain at the moment. Cedar stuck out wide. Royal Harris trying to pick off a few. He's got Marjoram up the inside. He's going to squeeze him all. Hold your breath. 
through Reed Park. He's right up the back of that Auto 1. V8 Ute at the moment. First time across the top of the mountain in race number two. Harris breathing down the neck of Marjoram. And he's wide on the entry at McPhillamy. He'll end up in the grass. Oh. <laughs> that is a huge yeah, moment. He was nearly in the concrete. He went all the way through the grass, all the way through the sand, and somehow came back onto the road. I think Longhurst might have just lifted for a partial second to give these boys a bit of room to breathe. Back at the front, and Kim Jane holding that lead nicely. Here comes Chris Killer Walton. You want to give this guy a bit of room. He doesn't mind rubbing panels. He's holding that suspended sentence over his head at the moment, so I wonder if we're going to see him slightly hold back a bit. Uh, no, it's probably <laughs> the easy answer because he said in the pre-race that he'll be getting stuck into it. He's got a toe here on Craig Donner side by side. Jeez, these Fords have got some grunt this weekend. He did get a pretty decent run off the elbow, but Dondas has got the inside line for the chase. How brave are they? Dondas has got enough, but look at the way that oh. they bounce and Walton had it sideways. He won't give this up. Uh, I reckon I'll give it to the Ford at the moment. He wants oh. it more. <laughs> Just launches it off the curbs. This will work out nicely for right Hansford. Hawkeye on board with Craig Dontis, a race winner at Sandown to his left in Hansford, who's got his own little celebration this weekend. 20 years since his dad won the great race alongside Larry Perkins, and he swings in to take third position, a sentimental favourite this weekend. And Stephen White is going with him as well, position five. And they don't like Super Deal of Commodore, but look at Kim Jane. That margin is fantastic. Walton now needs to start the hunt and try to work his way back onto that Bob Jane T-Mart's Commodore. Remember, it's 35 points for a race win in the V8 Ute Series, and they get points for qualifying. So that's why it's so critical for Nathan Pretty to work his way back up the order. But Craig Donis, of course, part of the Shannon Supercar Showdown this season. He's the elder statesman there, but he's one of the front runners here in the Ute Series, and he's going to the outside at turn two. That's a little tight. Gee, Hansford really stepped on his toes. He came drifting out in that braking area, which is already hard. Dontis right up against the grass, and the 33-year-old South Aussie stays in fourth. OK, this is what happened with Marjoram and Harris. Harris is all over that bumper. Oh, he's not over the bumper. He's in the bumper. He's actually helped out of Marjoram off the road there. So that was Siamese youth through there on board. Uh, now, this will tell us a little more. We're on board with the right already. Marjoram, look at it sideways. And it gets sideways again here. He misses the apex by a good margin. He's out wide. He's going off the road. And Harris stays in it. You can hear him in the throttle. Back to the front, Kim Jane. I think Walton's just starting to pick up some margin. But that replay chat, Harris, that doesn't look like a guy who's dominantly leading a championship. That looks like a guy who's now getting desperate because he's buried in the pack. He's trying to put a move here around the outside on David oh. Cedars and they've come together, the two title contending Fords. Oh. It looks like a guy who's getting a little bit frustrated and this is when it can go wrong. Cedars won't be very happy with this. Rare Spares on board, Andrew Fisher and it's pretty up the inside as well. He's up the inside of Barber. Oh, he lets the back end slide out <laughs> and he just about clips once, no, twice. No. I think he got him three times. And Wakefield on the inside is going to make this three wide. This is fantastic Ute racing. And this is where, though, Chad, the championship contenders are not running in clear air. They're fighting. Where's John Wood going? <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just thought he was going outside. down the escape road. The championship contenders are all buried in the pack, getting smashed and beaten up, and they all look desperate. None of them, not one of them looked like... They're willing to just pick their way through and get what they can in terms of points from this weekend. Look at Cedars down the inside with the move on Harris. Oh, he was in deep there. Bang. Another bit of a rub on the exit. Well, the championship contenders are playing for keeps. More after this. Auto 1 V8 Ute Series protected by Armour All. There's not much protecting Nathan Brady as he fights his way back through the pack. One kilo under in qualifying, excluded off the rear. Vogue Financial on board looking back at Elliot Barber as he's desperate to keep this championship alive. And the big thing there, Chad, is that there's points on the line in qualifying. So not only does he start from the back and have to work his way through, but he's lost points to his title contenders. Chris Walton here has caught Kim Jane at the top of the mountain. He's got some real car speed in that Redco Ford, the former Rookie of the Year. There's Hansford, Dontis, White... Jesse Dixon, this time 12 months ago, he was in the main race in the Shannon Supercar Showdown Commodore. But this is where it's getting really interesting. Ryle Harris, points leader. David Cedars, former Bathurst round winner and title contender, we should say. Race one winner. 
They've been duking it out like you wouldn't believe. It's what you love to see, two championship guys. Head of their game, scrapping around Australia's most famous racetrack. The quickest, the biggest in the country as well. And this battle at the front is really starting to heat up. These forwards have definitely had a bit more straight line speed down Conrad this weekend. But it's not really playing into the hands of Killer Walton right now. Traditionally, Chad, this place has been a Ford track in the V8 Ute Series with... You only have to look back at the race and round winners over the last few years to see that, but they've worked really hard on the parity of these cars for this weekend. There's more Commodores in the game up the front, and you can see a pretty good blend in the top ten, but for the moment, it's a Holden and a Ford 1 and 2, but they look pretty even on pace. Look at this. This is still going. Ryle Harris was locking the break into the chase. This is back with Nathan Pretty. He's going to have some very sorry-looking Yokohamas at the end of this one. Vogue Financial on board once again, riding in the Milwaukee Tools car. Second in the championship coming into this round. A couple of qualifying faux pas, one in Perth and one here at Bathurst. Cost him severely. And we said at the start of the show that he was aiming for history. No driver has ever won three Ute Series rounds in a row. That stat's going to stay the same, I would say, this weekend. How about this? You've got the nephew of a guy who won the great race 50 years ago in first. You've got the son of a guy who won the great race 20 years ago in third. And then you've got the wild card man himself, Chris Killer Walton, thrown in the middle and plenty of laps left to sort this one out. I was eager and keen to see what link you were going to make between Chris Walton and the <laughs> Bathurst 1000, but you didn't give me one. Yeah, maybe he watched the race. Oh, nice. Maybe not 50 years ago. There's Harrison Cedars. That's the fight of the race here. Nathan Pretty and Wayne Wakefield trying to go the long way around. Oh, Pretty lets it all hang out. A few guys that have raced in the great race themselves. Wakefield, starter off the front row, courtesy of Marcus Ambrose's efforts in qualifying. And this is going to be tight through the cutting. Elliot Barber wants a bit of this one. I don't reckon he should muck around with Nathan Pretty on a weekend like Pretty's having because he would have a serious sense of humour failure going because he's been a real contender this year. He's had the fastest car in the last couple of rounds, but he can't really use it here at the moment as they climb the top of the hill, of course. He comes in to such a veteran. 14 starts in the 1,000, a winner in the 24 hour as part of the Monaro Holden factory team. And he's been a regular runner at the front in the Ute Series for the last couple of years, but he's clicked this year. He's really understood these cars more. They've done a little bit more testing, which has helped. And look at Walton down the inside of the elbow. Surely contact is coming. We well, gave no. him some room. This is a very, yeah. very harsh of you, Chad. It was like when Happy Gilmore didn't do the putter throw. That was, I was expecting the, the big contact through the corner. But he is driving with that suspended sentence over his head and giving him some room. And they're going to go side by side down Conrod. Ford versus Holden. This is for the lead of the motor race. Pick a car. Which one do you want to be? In? I don't know. I think I'm going to go with Kim Jane's experience down the end. But the desperation of Chris Killer Walton is just so good. How often have we seen guys hold on to the outside? Oh, understeer for oh, Kim Jane. They're both, both off. I'm in the Ford for sure. Where's Ryan? Where's Ryan Hansford? Can he get on the back? He's driving the wheels <laughs> off it. He's sideways trying to catch the two leaders. He had half a chance. Further back, Stephen White is all over the back of Craig Dantas. They're all catching the leaders. Reese McNally on the back with Jesse Dixon. Fantastic racing. Now, we know that VAU racing's always close, and they do get stuck into it, but generally they're a little bit more reserved here at Mount Panorama. It's a track with consequences. No consequences <laughs> here. Stephen White down the inside on Craig Donis. That's for position four, but Hansford is in this fight as well, and if anything... He's more of a worry for Kim Jane than Jane is for Walton. Well, this is fabulous racing. Stephen White, the Dunlop Super Dealer, Erebus Motorsport car, or Ute, if you will. Erebus are going to give uh, an academy test drive to the Rookie of the Year this year, which is looking likely to be Elliot Barber at this point. Will that be AMG GT3 car or V8 Super car, you reckon? Either or. I think either or would be a good thing to have <laughs> yeah. a drive of. But I like this fight. I sense something brewing here. Harrison Cedars have looked like they are really going to go for it. This is the replay of Longhurst up the Tony inside. Longhurst. Oh, excuse me. That's unlike No Baloney to, uh, Tony so far this year. He's kept that thing pretty straight. Chad, that's Just why they call the him No Baloney. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at the understeer for Kim Jane. He's got that thing absolutely cranked to the left. You can see how much those wheels have turned in that Auto 1 replay. And Chris Walton, busy hands as we go to an ad break. An exciting finish to race number two is just around the corner. Flat stick. 
down the longest straight in Australian motorsport. And two championship leaders, Cedars and Harris. Cedars pulls out of the draft. This is getting very exciting, Noons. Hold on and break late. And Cedars was in the rev limiter there. You saw the lights come together on the dash. Now he's out wide through the curb. Oops. Oh, boys. There's concrete to the left waiting to catch you now because that's been added since they were here last year. Cedar's not done with. Harris driving down the inside and now drifting back to the outside. I said earlier that there was going to be drama, and this is drama. Troy Wilson is stopped at the top of the mountain. That's over through the S's. Should be out of the way, so we, I don't think we'll need a safety car for this one. Now, this is these massive championship implications between these two. If either of these guys get speared off as Cedars tries to get a run up Mountain Straight, they could be well and truly out of the championship chase and over Mountain Straight now. Oh, look at this oh, chat. I was about to say that they were going to touch going up the mountain, and they did. And again, that's two. This is aggro. This is aggro coming out between the two of them. Neither one is going to want to lift. And Griffin's bend. It's Harris who's the later of the two, but as he overcooked it, and the battle at the front's heating up as well. Walton up the inside of the cutting. Jane round the outside. He'll be on the inside for the next one. This is like a seesaw game. Backwards and forwards between these two. Hansford's not done with yet. Oh. And Stephen White's just inching up onto the back of them. Kim Jane, though, hustling to the top of the hill. Has won a race here before and is looking all right to do it again. But I reckon he's going to be terrorised for the next lap and a half. Great shot at the top of the hill at McPhillamy Park. He's really wide there. The Utes are trying to find places to overtake that no one else would have thought of. Are there yellow flags around this area? Do we have a local yellow? Can't see any being waved at the moment. Troy Wilson's Ute, so it's open slather. Down to the dipper. Oh, Jane just pinches the left front. And it's not really an overtaking opportunity, but you can set up one off the dipper through these little couple of kinks and then fire it down the inside. And this is what he tried to do earlier on with success. This time, though, not close enough, and Kim gets off the corner. He's got the punch and he's got the drive. Look at the margin he starts to build. That earns back credit for him at the chase when Walton otherwise would be right on his bumper. Walton now needs to worry about Hansford, not about Jane. Perfect situation for Kim Jane with the guys behind him. Potentially squaring off for a move down at the bottom of the chase. This could be the little break that Kim Jane needs with just over a lap to go. Late breaking in again. Oh, huge lock up for Walton. But still made it to the apex and made it around the corner. He uses that curb quite proficiently to actually get the car turned. Very aggressive on the curbs is Walton and Hansford has a chance down in turn 23. Murray's corner. Tucks back in behind him. Reese McNally on the back of this one, a race winner at the last round at Sandown as well. Oh, this is on again. Harris into the back of Cedars, who runs it down the inside. I've been waiting for them to both spear off the road somewhere, but they've still stayed on there, but they haven't been able to make any ground on the leaders who have really got pace. But look, I think Reese McNally is at the tail of this queue in the Stratco Commodore. His job this year has been under the radar. He's been on the podium a few times. He's been the quiet achiever this season. These guys, though, there's nothing quiet about this. Look at this bodywork flailing. Cedars in the toe. Listen to the slipstream. That's bravery. That is 100% bravery to be pulling out over that crest like that on the outside through the kink. Let the back end slip out. You usually have older set of, uh, an older set of Yokohama tyres on for the reverse grid race if you're starting back in the pack like he was. That is just commitment. So much commitment. Riding on top of Craig Dontis. A little bit of smoke out the back of these X-Force pipes there. Well, on top of Craig Dontis' car, because <laughs> if it was Craig Dontis himself, we'd be only about four foot seven off the deck. Kim Jane with a good lead. He has roughly a second gap now, about eight tenths over. The man in second position, Chris Walton, right hands with holding on for third. And Stephen White, after getting some good form together and a race win up in Townsville, has really carried some momentum with him into the back half of this season. And at the moment sits fourth, so with a second in race one, combined points determine the grid for the last race. He'd be on pole for race three, which would put him in a great position for the weekend round result. But the final time through the dipper, Kim Jane looks to have enough. This is the critical part. If he gets it off the elbow well, he's really hard to beat from here. Walton was loose through Skyline, kicked up some dust, but makes it back through the S's. Does he have half a shot here? Jane, both the Yokohamas complaining as Dontis misses the apex as well, gives Jesse Dixon half a sniff, but that gap looks pretty good. Can the two Fords combine? 
Can they link up to try and catch that Commodore at the front? It looks unlikely. That's a good lead for Kim Jane. Down Conrad for the final time. He's been the runner-up in the round here back in 2008 and in 2009. And in 09, he won race two. So he's got something about race two at Bathurst. He tends to go pretty well in them. Final time through the chase. Don't make a meal of this one, Kimbo. He's done it nicely, though. And he's got a margin. One turn to go, and he will pick up race two and make it one each between Ford and Holden on the mountain. Top three in the all-time drivers list now in the Auto 1 V8 Utes, protected by Armour All. 250 race starts this weekend, and he's going to celebrate it in style. 50 years after Bob Jane wins the great race, and it's Kim Jane first in race number two of the weekend. And that is far and away the race of the season. It's still on back in the pack with Elliot Barber rubbing panels once again. Vogue Financial on board with Nathan Pretty. Can he get a bit of an over-under out of the last corner? Not going to happen. Wayne Wakefield beats him home. And Jero McLeod in the McMahon Industries car follows them as well. That was exciting. And good news too. Stephen White, fastest lap of the race. He is really strong for race three. David Cedars was 10th. Harris was 11th. And Nathan Pretty back in 16th. Well, Kim, Jay, what is it about this track? You're just driving like a man possessed. Oh, well, you know, we had a great start. Unfortunately, the uh, the car probably doesn't have the speed that we want at the start of the race, but it was pretty good there at the end. Uh, you know, congratulations to Chris. Great racing with him. We gave each other plenty of room. There's a couple of little bangs here and there, but you know, Robin's racing, and uh, you know, it's just great to come away with a win. Here's your chance to win a once-in-a-lifetime V8 Ute racing experience at the Sydney Telstra 500, thanks to the new Hawkeye vehicle. You could win flights, accommodation and grandstand passes for you and a friend, plus a high-speed lead-out lap in a V8 Ute. And you get to watch the Ute race from pit lane. Then it's back to the V8 Ute paddock to collect your Hawkeye prize pack, plus lunch in the Hawkeye tent and a tour of Hawkeye in all its glory. For your chance to win the V8 Ute racing experience at the Sydney Telstra 500, head to the V8 Ute's website. Extreme Clutch has been the official clutch supplier to the V8 Utes for four years. During this time, Extreme Clutch has been able to monitor and test their clutches, which has led to the development of a new twin plate version. The 184 mil clutch that they're now running is a lot smaller than the older style clutch. The older style clutch was more like a modified standard road clutch. Um, the smaller clutch has a lot less moment of inertia and is a performance gain for them. It's a lot lighter and also reduces the amount of load on the synchros and the gearboxes. Another major benefit for the drivers is it offers a shorter throw on the pedal and allows drivers to change gears more quickly. With the new look Extreme Clutches only introduced at the last round, there's nothing like racing at Mount Panorama to put them to the test. Bathurst is, as everyone knows, probably one of the toughest races of the season. Um, it's got quite a lot of hills, it's got um, quite a lot of hard downshifts, hard upshifts and um, very hard start at the beginning so the drivers and, and vehicles will be testing the clutches to the absolute limit. For more info, head to the V8 Utes website. Time to grid them up for the third and final race of the weekend. This is going to be very exciting if race two is anything to go by. And a couple of race winners from Townsville off the front row together. And combined points from the first two races set the grid for this one. So Stephen White is on pole alongside Kim Jane. Of course, this is, would you believe it, the 300th championship Ute race in series history since 2001. And it also is the last ever race from Tony Longhurst, the two-time Bathurst 1000 winner, the former Bathurst 12 hour winner. He will leave the sport at the end of this weekend. He's building boats. The business is booming. He will be booming in this final race. White and Jane on the front row. Cedars and Hansford row two. Ford or Holden? That is the ultimate question as we get race three underway. No baloney, Tony's final race. As we get set to go, it's going to be tied into turn one. Dontis up the middle. He's got Walton to the inside, Fisher on the outside. He doesn't want to get into the back of Dixon, but he does. He hits the back of Jesse Dixon, who catches it nicely. Good save from the young man. Oh, we got Carnage in the background as well. We've got a few off. Is that Spud Wood, potentially, in uh, the dust? Adam Marjoram is definitely there. Red and blue Auto 1 Commodore. Oh, Gary McDonald to the right. And John Wood, Battery World Commodore, is the other car you were right. So 
I think that's a separate incident, though, to the one we saw with Jesse Dixon involved. But look at this, Hansford and Cedars, third and fourth. Jane and White clearing away again. Kim Jane, the guru of the starts. I want to know what he's doing because he's nailing them. Yeah, new clutches in these utes from Sandown as the safety car comes out for the dust-up that we've got down there in Turn 1. The experienced guys know how to use new clutches. They've just raced with everything before, so that's probably why he's getting off this start line so well this weekend as the safety car will pick up the field. Gee, that's bad news for Adam Marjoram. Really disappointing for the young guy. He has to not only finish up in the sand for race three, but when he gets home to Perth, he gets his exam results back, which is always a bit of a worry for anyone who's been to uni before. As long as he did his study, he'd be OK. But at the moment, he's studying the bath of scenery, which is not the way to be. Now, look at that. That's Nathan Pretty. Oh. Championship contender limping. Look at the left front. That tyre is off the rim. He must have been involved in all of that drama that went on. Jesse Dixon... Hasn't made it further than Mountain Straight. How good is this for Elliot Barber? He's got two of the Rookie of the Year contenders virtually out of the race. This thing's doing the crab walk up Mountain Straight at the moment. I'd be driving oh. that slower if I were Adam. Oh, he'll be so, so heartbroken with that one. This is the replay of the start. As you said, Noons, great start for Kim Jane. He was able to swing around the outside at turn one. And, oh, Walton up the inside. And that was a bit of a domino effect with three guys, including the now out of the race, Jesse Dixon. What happened further back, though? Ah, uh, that was... It was all going on before they got there. There were three of them involved. <laughs> Wakefield was involved. Marjoram, McDonald. It was Barbara up the inside that kind of spearheaded that whole attack. He had two wheels on the grass on the Xbox sign on the way in, so... Craig Thomas, Thomas was yeah. among it all. That's Dixon to the right. Oh. There's the contact. I wouldn't mind betting that that's busted the steering or the suspension on the Heyman Reese Commodore, hence why he stopped at the top of the mountain. But Jane and White got it oh. right. Rest of them, oh, oh. though, disastrous. Gee, Marjoram was gone well and truly early there. Those two tangled on the streets of Townsville together, actually, Barber and Marjoram. On that occasion, it was Marjoram who got given the drive-through. This is important. Auto 1 replay right now. Let's try to figure out. We saw him with a punctured tyre limping around. Oh. There's contact that starts, and he's not involved at the moment, Nathan Pretty. He's about to be, though. Wait. There. Oh, wait. Crunched. I think oh. he got it from both sides. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He has made it back to the lane and they're working to get him back on the road for the restart. That's huge for the championship. Safety car controlling the field and the restart to the final race is still to come. The safety car pulls away and the Auto 1 V8 Utes protected by Armour All are racing once again the final race at the mountain and Warren Millett made his recent return to the sport and has already found his way off. That's his 50th round start this weekend, Chad, and he's bunkered, but the rear wheels are in the grass, the fronts are in the sand. He's done. Hopefully that's just going to be a local yellow. That's race control. They've got the decision to make. Hopefully that's just going to stay a local yellow for down in the chase as we go back to the front battle pack. It's Kim Jane, Stephen White, Brian Hansford and David Cedars. He's going to come up looking roses at the end of this weekend. Or smelling like them as well. <laughs> Look at Reese McNally. He's with them. I mentioned him in the last race. He's a quiet achiever. He doesn't get involved in all the drama of the others. He hangs around with the fast guys. He picks up championship points. Generally doesn't damage his car on his own volition. He has been a star this year. Probably hasn't got the credit that he deserves, but he's running with them. There's Dondas. There's Chris Walton. Andrew Fisher, who is another of the guys who went to the Denny Ute Master. And you might be thinking, how does the Jesus Ute go at the Denny Ute Master? It goes really well. They've got a specific uh, show car Ute that uh, Andrew was doing burnouts and circle work in. It's a big hit. It's a massive event, and it, its timing is so good. Coming here to Bathurst, and how about this? This is what it looks like if we bolted Ute Chad underneath his car, <laughs> and I reckon we could just about fit you in there. There's room, room of plenty. There's the brake componentry on the left rear. That shock working overtime as well as they go across the top of the mountain. Fantastic shot across the rear diff assembly and axle. Look at Roy Harris in the background. Rear of the tap out forward. Just stepping out as he puts the pressure on Gary Baxter. But he's made no impression this weekend. There's no car speed in car one. Qualified 19th, or really 20th until Pretty got pinned. 14th and 11th in the two races. He is really struggling. The way it sits, Cedars who's putting the pressure here on Hansford, could end up with a championship lead going to the Gold Coast. Now, this should be local yellows down here. It is. You can see it off to the left. No passing down at the bottom of the chase, which is tough for everyone as Walton nearly goes firing into the back of Dontis. 
Everyone's going to sneak on through the tap out energy. You, it's just about tapped out. It's had a few taps this weekend and desperate to hold on to that championship lead. The good news is, though, for Royal Harris, it's a very strong track that he's got coming up next when we go to Surface Paradise. What's happening back here? Ah, this was the incident that led to Warren Millett firing off and getting bogged in the sand. Ooh. It's actually his 50th event this week. He missed a couple when he had brain surgery to have a tumour removed, which is very dramatic in its own right. Wake Up is his Sydney-based backpacker company. As he goes flying backwards through the chase. Back to the front. And Kim Jane and Stephen White look like the form two because Hansford hasn't been able to do anything with these two Commodores. They've had the pace so far in this one. Cedars in fourth. Reese McNally with him and then a gap to the rest. So a couple of laps to go. Of course, there's still two rounds to go after this weekend. The Gold Coast and Sydney Olympic Park. And Chad, what do those two places have in common? Street circuits. And what comes with street circuits? Concrete walls. Correct, exactly. So this series is going to go into a real a street shootout fight mode because that's one of the elements. They do do a lot of street racing and the Utes oh, love that shot. That has been great this weekend. The Utes really do step up at the street races and the hand-to-hand -hand combat where the drivers really come into play is something to see. Okay, we just have about two laps left in this one and it is by no means over because we've got four guys at the front, maybe even five, who can really shake things up. It's all about who's got the freshest rubber. One guy who loves the tyres going off because he doesn't mind the back end sliding out is Ryle Harris, but here's Chris Walton. Oh, what's happened to Stephen White? White? In the fence. He's in the fence and he's, I reckon he's hit the outside and bounced back to the inside. So. We'll have to see that on replay. We were too busy seeing the move that Walton was putting and Dontis was trying to give him room up the inside. And oh. that's, that's bash. That's bad damage. Stephen White on target for a round win, a podium, maybe even a race win, but it's all gone begging. Kim Jane now has margin and Cedars is by Hansford. Those yellow flags have been withdrawn down there by the looks of it, so I think you can get back to passing. Cedars and Hansford... No, it hasn't been withdrawn. We've got a yellow as well down there still. So I'd say, Chad, that he's got the move done on Conrod just before the chase, just before that yellow flag zone begins. So I reckon he might have cut it very fine, but I think he's OK. Reese McNally has dropped back a couple here as well. He's fallen right back into the clutches of Chris Walton. The tap out energy Ute is sizing up. One man who's been relatively quiet this weekend. Yeah, let's have a look at what happened. Oh, oh no, it's just gone straight off the inside. Did something break? Because it didn't even look like it was turning. Oh, that's what happened to McNally. He got caught up in all that. It's a bit of a Jason Barguana circa 97 moment. Yeah, but, it did oh. remind a lot. Didn't get as much air as Bargs in the Young Lions car. Remember, Stephen White was a young lion in that year's intake for the HRT run program. But whether he's tagged the wall on the inside there or just brushed it, and it's just driven him off the road and into the concrete. But whatever the case, he's out of the race. Rare spares on board with... Andrew Fisher looking back at Chris Walton and this race will finish at the end of this one. So this is it, now or never. Time certain as we are on the morning of the Bathurst 1000. Super cheap auto Bathurst 1000 coming up after this. So a tight schedule to keep to. So it's been brought back a lap early. Dontis and McNally. So Dontis has slipped up the inside of the Stratco Ute. I reckon the best looking Ute in the pack, the Stratco entry since it turned up over in WA looking resplendent. His home track in Perth. Know anybody from Perth, chat? I think there's a couple around. Yeah, I thought there might be. Just doing some numbers here too. The uh, spreadsheet is smoking away and with Stephen White parked uh, there on the left of the circuit, this will put David Cedars in the position to win the round even if he doesn't get by Kim Jane. He is just on an absolute bank of podiums here. This is what, fourth straight podium. He was second here last year. But having said that, Maybe. He is thinking about the win. Last chance, last time down into the chase. Cedars has closed his gap onto the back of Kim Jane. It's tight. He can get a good run out of the chase and line one up downhill into Murray's. I don't reckon he's got enough. Kim's not even blocking the inside line, which shows you how confident he is. But he'll get home and he'll pick up two from three for the weekend. Kim Jane, a race winner once again in race two and three. Ahead of David Cedars, who's had a huge weekend in terms of the championship. This guy has let his foot off the pedal a little bit. Ryle Harris opens up the door in the championship. Two rounds remain. 
and things are going to get very, very heated on the streets of Surface Paradise if this weekend is anything to go by. Fantastic drive, Kim Jane. Take another win off the front row. McNally fifth from Fisher. Walton backs to Harris in ninth. And Elliot Barber rounded out the 10. Kim, another race win and a great effort on the podium again. Yeah, listen, uh, we're just, uh, I'm just blown away, really. Great result from the team. The car was was very good in that last race. Again, we've got a great start. Probably not exactly the one we wanted, but, you know, we got through uh, in the first by the first corner and then managed to hold it out there. And uh, I'm not sure what happened to Stevie there, but uh, hopefully he's OK. And, um, you know, all credit to the team and yeah, just a great weekend. Well, amidst all the rubbing and bashing, David Cedars takes the round win and two guys missing from the top 10 in the points this weekend. Ryle Harris and Nathan Pretty, they had absolute shockers by their standards. And this is the implications right now. Enter Drivers' Championship. And Cedars has charged from third to take the championship lead and Pretty falls 47 off the pace. David Cedars, what a weekend. You've, you've wrapped up the podium and also great championship points. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. As, as I always say, anything can, can happen usually does in the Ute Series. And I was 40-odd points behind in the championship lead. Now I'm leading the championship. I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine a better weekend around win, race win, pole and championship lead at Bathurst, the, the Holy Grail. SS Induction's Hard Charger Award, Danny Bizadzik passing nine cars in race number two. Good enough to see him charge up the order. And Elliot Barber is looking very, very strong in our Yokohama Rookie of the Year honours and that drive with Erebus at the end of the season is up for grabs. The family actually came to surprise David Cedars this weekend. He surprised them with a win. Great job, Dave. And the next time that we see the Utes will be on the streets of Surface Paradise. Pack your boardies for that one. That is the penultimate round of the championship. Once again, the Utes came to Mount Panorama and they put on a massive show. There was plenty of biff, plenty of barge, and we signed off in the career of Tony Longhurst. We have a new championship leader, a huge round in the championship. Cannot wait for the next one on the streets of Surface. We'll see you there. The last time out, the V8 Utes took on Bathurst. Boom! And then both off. Oh, he lets the back end slide out. And the championship lead changed hands. And two championship leaders, Cedars and Harris. David Cedars has had a huge weekend in terms of the championship. Now the title fight heads from the mountain to the concrete canyons, where things can go wrong in the blink of an eye. Oh, into the wall. The shock, plenty of carnage. No way! Well, we're good to go. The shorts are on, the surf's up, the sand's ready. It's the Gold Coast penultimate round in the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour all today on the streets of Surface Paradise. Title fight is on the line. Five drivers separated by 54 points on a very special weekend here on the Gold Coast. It's the 100th V8 Ute Championship round since the category began back in 2001. This man, David Seed, is in great form. He won the last round at Mount Panorama Bathurst. He's been the bridesmaid of the championship for the last two years. Could this be the year that he turns number two into number one? David Cedars must be shaking his head about what it takes to win a V8 Ute Racing Championship. Last year, he was on the podium five rounds straight, but fell short of toppling Ryle Harris for the title. This year, he's only had two race wins, but suddenly finds himself in the box seat for that elusive championship. It's one of those things, second two years in a row, it, 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 it nearly kills you when you, you do it the second time. If it happened a third time, I don't know what would happen, uh, but uh, I'll definitely have to maybe think of a different category to run in <laughs> or something like that. I'd have to go go try and find something that's a bit easier to win. This, this Ute category just, just always gets away from me at the last step. Ryle Harris isn't about to go down without a fight, especially in his hometown, where a win here is considered a personal badge of honour. Harris won all races here in 2011, but Cedars dominated last year and holds the lap record, setting up a perfect storm of fierce racing on the streets of Surface Paradise. Yeah, I think my back's against the wall at the moment, which is good. Uh, I like the pressure on me and, um, you know, when I'm up against the corner, anything could happen. So my elbow's out and it comes down to me and David into a corner, then uh, I'm going to make sure I'm trying to get into that corner before he does. Perhaps the hard luck story is Nathan Pretty, who appeared on track to lead the championship after Bathurst after winning the previous two rounds, but penalties and a tyre issue after a last race scrap puts him back in fourth. He'll now take a different approach to claw back some points, given he's not leading. 
I would have tried to keep my heels clean a little bit, but I've got nothing to lose now. I'm the I'm the you know, the hunter, so and I'll be hunting with all sorts of arrows and guns and all sorts of different things. Uh, with a lot of ammunition, I'll be coming at them pretty hard. While the title combatants have traded blows for the championship lead, Rhys McNally must be considered a quiet achiever, slowly chipping away to be in the hunt in third. But informed drivers who might shake things up a bit include Bathurst round winner Kim Jane and talented Ute Series rookie Stephen White, who's faced a race against time to repair his Ute after this nasty shunt. Stephen White in the fence. It was a, a massive effort from uh, our team, uh, KPH, Kevin, uh, who's based up here in Queensland. Uh, I got a phone call from him on Monday night. He goes, Steve, I've got bad news. He goes, we need a miracle to, to be here this weekend because of the angle that we hit the wall on. Uh, it's just broken everything. We picked the car up the day of practice and uh, we only had minutes to spare, literally. So I don't know if that was good timing or uh, we managed to squeeze it in within that time. You can't back off now. It's These guys now have to, they're either going to win it, I think, or bin it. You know, you've got to get out there and have a go and you can't leave yourself wondering. So, you know, it's, it's a good, fun track. But it's, it's a matter of surviving it as well. And with Tony Longhurst hanging up his helmet, Dunlop Series driver George Medici will grid up and no doubt give the series regulars a shake-up as they prepare to duke it out on this high-speed, concrete-lined battle track. Well, the stage could not be more perfectly set. We are getting hyped up and ready for the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series racing around the streets of Surface Paradise. Racing coming up after this. Party on the streets of Surface Paradise as it is every year. The 10th year that the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series has raced around these streets. Alex Davison alongside me as we're getting very excited to go racing. First to the NZ Drivers' Championship and David Cedars has such a narrow lead. Bathurst just crammed it all in together. The top five guys all with a shot. Remember, 35 points for a race win. So you can pretty much toss a coin to see who's going to be leading that championship at the end of this weekend. But it's advantage. Cedars, Armour All Pole Position Award and a big bank of points as well. Now sees this guy with $1,000 in his pocket and a 12-point championship lead coming into the races this weekend. So it's all teed up perfectly for the mine site fencing guy who is going to be out there off the front row alongside Reese McNally, who's just bought his first home. So we can celebrate that. And Stratco Ute has signed on for another year with Stratco next year. Alex, we're getting set for a huge race in the championship. I am nervous. If any of the boys <laughs> like to fit way too many cars into not enough space, it's the V8 Ute drivers. So let's see what happens in the first corner. Down through this list and qualifying, personal best also for Ben Dunn, who's up in sixth position, beating Roel Harris is always a good effort. Roel not doing the best of jobs in qualifying by his lofty standards. Troy Wilson, former AFL player towards the back of this list, and uh, as always, a big bunch of newbies, including George Slick Medecki, who's uh, Medecki's up towards the front of this field, and Leighton Barker as well. Oh, we're just saying Ben Dunn's had such a good start to the weekend in qualifying, and he's not made it back from the warm-up lap. Maybe drive line related, not too sure. Green flag at the back of this one. And we'll see what happens. The guys revving up the engines. We're ready, ready for some action at this first corner where it funnels in perfect for some V8 Ute carnage. These new clutches on these Utes have been tough to get away. That's why Baxter's slow to get away. Are they all going to get around him? It's tight. Just he slowly gets away. That's a nervous moment, Alex. But they're not out of trouble yet because this is where it all happens, down at the first chicane. I'm sure we're going to see some people just shortcutting completely and ignoring the track. Bit of contact there, but so far, so good. They're all through. That's disappointing. <laughs> so far, so good. The weekend is young, Alex. Don't worry, there's yellow flags in the background. So one is around. Oh, Tanson. I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon, indeed. The HT Racing Ute has looped it in turn one. You can bet that there was contact going on there. The run down the back straight. George Medici, Wanda Paints on board. He's looking to the left of Kim Jane. He's going to have to yield this position. Surely, the approach to the chicane, it's tight. Normally, Kim Jane should have the line, but that normally doesn't stop these blokes. And But he gets in front. Good job by those guys. That's a dangerous part of track and not a spot where you want to go too wide. Medici raced in this series last year at this event as a one-off in the Auto 1 wildcard. We're on the... Go-Kart's Brisbane car right now with Cam Wilson, local boy, looking up the inside, getting set to do a 24-hour race in the coming weeks. Just looping around and around and around in his go-kart for a very good cause. We'll touch on that later, but it's Cedars out front. 
Walton lets the back of his ute slide out. These guys love a bit of contact, love a bit of sideways action, and uh, these guys giving the wall a bit of room on the first lap, but I spoke a little bit too soon there <laughs> in the background. So we're through fairly cleanly. We've managed to avoid a safety car in the first lap. Let's all just tick that box. But Cedars is ticking the big box in the championship right now. Pole position and a good lead in this race as he ticks off the first lap. Nathan Pretty also trying to claw his way back into this championship after a shocker at Bathurst. Cedars where he wants to be. Anytime you're leading the championship at the last round at a street circuit where anything could happen, you want to be out in front and in clear air. So he'll be hoping like hell he can get away and get into the safe zone. But I can't see that happening. Bit of nose to tail there at turn four. Good stuff. Roll Harris, defending series champ up the back of Elliot Barbaro. Rookie of the year thanks to Yokohama so far this year. And is this Matty Nolan who's come in? So problems for the Sig World Ute. He had a big moment in qualifying, which we saw earlier in the episode, where he uh, ripped off one of those wheels across the kerbs. What do we got? We got crash damage there or mechanical drama? I couldn't see any damage on the car. Oh, sideways moment between Jane and Mediki. It's a great camera view, this one. You see all the guys who are pushing pushing the limits clip that tyre bundle on the edge of the track there. Oh. And... Okay, okay, it was crash damage. Yeah, that's what happened with Hansford in the background. And hard to say exactly who it was who hit him. This might give us a bit more of an idea. There's Mediki and Jane making contact. Watch towards the back. Oh, Stephen White. The Dunlop Super Deal is you with contact. And this is what happened to Nolan. We're going around the back of the circuit. Chucky Baxter out wide is going to hook the oh, fence. Wham. That's what we saw in the background before. How easy is that to do around this place? That was relatively light contact for a Ute. Normally they keep going for another three seasons after that sort of contact, so I'm surprised he had to pull in. But anyway, you see the guys launching over the curbs, Roll Harris sideways and on two wheels through the back chicane there. Fantastic stuff. Craig Dondas a, lo a long, long way further back than we normally see him, so uh, not sure what happened there in qualifying, but I'm sure he'll be fighting his way back through. Strangely quiet weekend for the thirsty Camel Ute. Doing a good job. Or has been doing well on the Shannon's V8 Supercar Showdown. Looking for a test drive with Ford Performance Racing. The big prize up for grabs. I'm alongside a Ford Performance Racing star in its own right. I don't know about a star, but, you know, good to see some of these blokes getting a V8 Supercar's opportunity. But to be honest, so far, this is my first V8 Utes commentary session. I was hoping for a bit more action. So come on, guys, give me something to yell about. We're only three laps into the weekend, Alex. Settle down. Don't worry, these guys will turn it on for you. I promise. I think they're just trying to get through race one. Elliot Barber has a problem with that ute. The bonnet was starting to flap up, and that is going to be something that you would imagine race control will be looking very closely at. Yeah, that's not what you want to see. As soon as the wind gets out... Oh, here we go. Someone's stopping on the inside there. That's a bit sketchy. So you got to... Just trying to let the leaders through. That's Matty Nolan. So he's just come out of the yeah, pits. Yeah, he's come out of the pits. Okay. Yeah, that bonnet, you don't want to see those bonnets coming loose. As soon as the wind gets under it, it'll smash the windscreen. It can be pretty dangerous. But uh, if they've got the safety clips on, it should be all right. Hawk... On board with Craig yep. Dondas. Hawkeye on board. Craig Dondas running down at the beach on the right-hand side. No time to uh, cup a look over towards the sand. Keep you focused very much on this... Five, six, seven, eight, nine combination of curbs. Working his way through the field there. A little, little bit too far back to, for a lunge into turn 11, but here we go. Here's a lunge into turn 11. This is Walton, who's been fairly conservative so far this weekend, driving with a suspended sentence over his head still from sand down after extensive contact in one of the races with Nathan Pretty. Putting plenty of pressure on Reese McNally there, all over the back of his car. He's defending a little bit, but at the same time, trying to keep his eyes forward. He wants to attack that next car in front of him. Now, McNally's got a championship to think about here. He's coming to the weekend in third position, and it's started off pretty good with a qualifying from the front row effort. Can he keep it together and hold off who is one of the more aggressive drivers behind him? And Chris Killer Walton, a guy who's had a couple of wins over in New Zealand this year as well, racing the Utes over in NZ. He's a huge expert doing plenty of laps in these cars. You know, they're definitely a tricky thing to drive. Um, I've heard, I haven't driven one, but I've heard from a few of the V8 guys who have had a steer that they're definitely a specialty and by no means would any of the V8 guys just jump in and go straight to the front of the field. These guys are very, very good at driving these cars and we see that week in, week out. The tap out energy ute of Ryle Harris is really starting to pour on the pressure. It's a young Elliot Barber, the young Victorian in his rookie season. And... Uh, all-purpose pest controllers have come on board with Royal Harris this weekend. He's being a bit of a pest right now on the back of Elliot Barber as they bounce their way back through the chicanes. Still waiting to see if we're going to cop a meatball flag for Barber's car with that flapping around bonnet. 
Sure the, uh, sure the officials are keeping an eye on it. You see these guys using so oh. much kerb, and when they get the line right, the cars are actually look pretty nice over the kerbs, but they've barely got two wheels on the track. Up the inside here is Jesse Dixon. Jesse Dixon on. fighting through the field. Great move there. Now, Marjoram's done well here to not lose two positions. It's kind of consolidation there, isn't it? It's a terrible spot to be overtaken at because you try and outbreak the guy who's trying to overtake you, and then all of a sudden there's nowhere to go. We've got plenty more racing still to come. It's the Auto 1 V8 Utes protected by Armour All around the streets of surface. Surf's up around Surface Paradise and the Auto 1 V8 Utes, protected by Armour All, sliding their way around this 2.9 kilometre circuit in fine style in race number one as Walton sideways on the entry to one. You get used to that sort of opposite lock stuff, but there's action coming into turn four here and Royal Harris up the inside. Oh. Wheels locked, his car looks like it's just on the Paris Dakar race. His mirror's <laughs> hanging off it and the front stoved in, it's all happening. And somehow he and Elliot both get the move done to Walton. That was just bizarre. It looked like we were looking for Harris to go up the inside. Now Walton's going to try and get this spot back. Oh, Hold on. Side by side into the back chicane's never good. And Elliot Barber sideways, Scandinavian, flicking it through <laughs> the back chicane just about. That young man can drive. And Walton has really got the run off the kerbs to be able to get both back. So he goes back to, and now he's going to try and go back up to him. Barber goes out wide. Harris will sneak up the inside. This is awesome racing. This is Ute racing at its best. That's what that's what we come to the Gold Coast to see, especially when we're watching the Utes. But you can see both the guys right on the limit under brakes there. Elliot Barber lucky not to go up the escape road. Did a good job to get it through the corner. Then it's Mediki, Fisher and Kim Jane. So there's no shortage of big names running around the streets today. George Medecki, a former winner in V8 Utes and at the Gold Coast, I believe. So he'll be hoping to get through the field a little bit more. Staying out of trouble so far. Quite race. Here comes Elliot Barber now. He's been brought in for that loose bonnet. So that's going to cost him a good result in race number one this weekend, leading the Rookie of the Year honours so far, thanks to Yokohama and an Erebus test drive up for grabs for that best rookie at the end of the season. So very disappointing. Thankfully for him, at least, that championship lead, in a sense, is looking good. And we've got mirrors bouncing down the road. And now Harris gets that spot back from Walton. These guys are having a Ooh. great race. This is great V8 Ute racing. Chris Walton's car looking much tidier than Royal Harris's at the moment. As I said, a bit of damage there, but still running well by the looks of it. This is the battle just outside the top three. Wanda Paints on board. George Mediki, like Alex said, a race winner here before, won the reverse grid race back in 07. Look how much they've got to use the kerbs to carry the momentum through there. Let's see, I was about to say, let's see how greedy he gets. And Chris Walton squeezing down the outside there. These guys aren't giving up, but they get through turn 11 cleanly. That was amazing. He was 30 metres behind him coming into the chicane then. Just the use of the kerbs is better. And he shot straight up to the back of him to set up another passing opportunity. Fisher goes defensive. Kim Jane fighting hard, trying to get past Andrew Fisher, and here we here we go. Look, this is this Boom. is where, there goes his mirror. <laughs> that mirror was hanging off anyway. Yeah. Nobody needed that. I don't think they're looking in the mirrors these blokes anyway. But <laughs> put him out of his misery. How greedy you are through the chicanes! How much you want to risk damaging your car and bouncing off oh, into the wall or something like that. Like that. Yeah, oh, look exactly. at the shock hanging down. It's disconnected from the top. Left rear. <laughs> Shock problem for Jero Gray. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about. You can risk a bit more, use a bit more kerb, get a run on the guy in front of you, a bit too oh, much kerb. Look at the rebound on it now. It's just completely gone. Your shock falls out. Anytime <laughs> you see a shock or a spring on the road, you know it's bad. He's turned that left rear into a yo-yo. X-Force on board with Cam Wilson as he slides his way through the chicane as well. He's got Jesse Dixon in hot pursuit. Great car control. Sideways, on two wheels, under pressure from Jesse Dixon. These guys are right on the edge. You see puffs of blue smoke coming into the corners as they're creating their own ABS systems. Obviously, no <laughs> ABS on these VAU cars. So, Huntington's disease is the cause, and that is going to be the reason he pedals a go-kart around his own venue for 24 hours straight to raise awareness for that disease. And he's been doing some two- to five-hour stints and training for that as well. So, awesome stuff. Is he doing it by himself, or...? Just out there circulating for 24 hours, setting a Guinness Book of Records, uh, world record. So that's pretty impressive. That's very impressive. He's got a lot to think about in his Ute race, though, because he's in hot pursuit with Jesse Dixon at the moment. As these guys are bouncing away from the curves again, the tap out energy Ute, Brile Harris. You see every lap of the race that goes on, the boys are getting more and more greedy and more and more confident, launching their cars over the curves. That turn one chicane does not even exist anymore. They're just straight lining it. <laughs> Now, Harris is in damage control mode here because the guy winning the championship is also winning the race. He came into Bathurst with that championship lead. He gave it back to David Cedars, and now he's desperate to try and hold on to it. Hawkeye on board, riding on the thirsty camel, Ute. 
Craig Dondas fighting through the field. I'm not sure what position he's up to, but he's definitely moving forward. Right up behind Jero Gray. He's got the broken suspension and see the car just won't even turn into those chicanes properly at all now. Two laps left, he'll be lucky to get to the finish. He'll be counting the laps down to, you know, get around a track like this with no shock absorber in is uh, not fun. Doing a good job holding on. Now, that's the battle for eighth and ninth down there at the moment. Got Wayne Wakefield in pursuit as well. And the Bacardi Yokart Ute. Looking forward to having a few Bacardis at the Ute after party on Sunday night. Also, tap out energy on board with that. Jesse Dixon still putting pressure on Cam Wilson. This is going to be a fight to the finish. Two laps left after this lap. Trying to get a good run onto the back straight. Come on, give him a bit of a nudge there. That's what your front bumper's for, Jesse. Get into it. <laughs> Now, this is the guy that's leading the race somewhat <laughs> quietly, doing his own thing. You said that at the start of the event. Anytime you're leading the championship, if you can get 1.7 seconds out in front, it's a good day. So, Cedars will be loving it out in front there. One lap to go. Final lap, so he's looking pretty safe, barring disaster, although I shouldn't say that. Commentators, knock, knock. Moz. <laughs> Last but, lap. But this race is definitely not over, we're seeing. It's been called short, so... That's the reason why we've brought this one forward a lot. Now Time certain race. Now let's see if Chris Walton can uh, sneak a little bit more curb through that chicane, get a run on Ryle Harris into turn 11. That's oh. where it's going to happen. The back end of the Ute stepped out massively on entry. And he's done that. He's got a fantastic run out of the chicane. We haven't seen what's going to happen into turn 11, but I think it's going to be on. All right, so Cedars will lead them through the last few corners. Comfortable lead. Pole position and a race win looking likely. Don't want to go putting the knockers on him through the last few corners. Pretty is also looking good for the championship and has third in the championship as well in McNally. So all your championship contenders are towards the front of the field here. You can see Seed has backed, has, has backed it off a little bit on the last lap, it looks like. Pretty closed the gap, but anyway, he's going to cross the line first. That's all you need to do. Just try to look after his tyres in race one. They have to be very conservative around here on tyre wear. And it's going to be David Cedars' third race win of the season. And that's a pretty good one. It's his 15th in the series. And after all was said and done, Ryle Harris leads home Chris Walton in what was an epic battle around this awesome little concrete canyon. That was just fantastic racing the whole way through the field. This guy has brought that car back looking brand spanking new. Nathan Pretty still trying to consolidate after a shocker and Bathurst comes home in second and also Reese McNally turning a front row start into a top three finish. But Carly's with our winner. David, you took off like a man possessed. There was no way they were getting you on this one. Nah, definitely not. I, I got the, the whole shot and went, went for it, basically. Uh, uh, pulled out a gap, controlled the gap. Um, when I had some traffic, I lost a bit of the gap. And as soon as I lost a bit of the gap, I put the hammer down and stretched the legs straight away again. So the car was awesome. I could control my own pace, go fast if I needed to. And yeah, I, I haven't had an easy one like that for a while. I'll take it. It's all looking good for David Cedars so far this weekend, but there's still two big bruising races left around this Surface Paradise circuit. More to come after this. You're watching the Auto One V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. there doesn't appear to be vast differences between a road-going ute and a V8 racing ute. But dig a little deeper and all is revealed. A normal ute could probably outdrag it or get close. The big difference is, is in the suspension and the handling package of the ute. We've got a great braking package. Uh, DBA 5000 series rotors really pull it up. Uh, we've got tough roto race pads as well. So put those two together means the car can stop fairly well. Uh, we've got DMS coilover suspension, so we can adjust ride heights, bumps, rebounds, everything to really tailor the car to a certain track. Those two areas are the big difference, the big gains over a road-going car. In terms of servicing and maintenance, it's no wonder V8 ute racing mechanics and engineers are kept busy. The brake pads, we, uh, we change every single race meeting. In a normal road car, you do it about 40,000 to 60,000 k's, depending on the, the type of car. Um, and the, the tyres, we only get 100 k's out of these tyres before they lose, uh, lose their edge. The first two laps are pivotal in achieving a lap time and, um, you know, you compare that to a, to a road-going car of about 60,000 k's per tyre set, uh, there's a lot of difference. For more info, head to the V8 Utes website. Time for those two words that gets everybody excited in the Auto 1 V8 Ute paddock, reverse grid and we're reversing the top nine 
but Jeremy Gray has a five-spot grid penalty, so Kim Jane is the man who will go to pole position. Reverse grid sends shivers down my spine, but that's what I'm here for. I came to watch this reverse grid race for the V8 Ute, so I can't wait. Everyone knows that things get a little bit crazy around street circuits and utes, and when you make it a reverse grid race, it gets even crazier, especially with some of the big guys at the back. Elliot Barber, Stephen White, Ryan Hansford, all very fast guys towards the back of this grid, and keep an eye for the way that they'll be ripping through. Definitely ben. adding fuel to the fire, reverse grid. Five-second board, ready for the start. Ben Dunn will be starting off dead last and he's got some good speed this weekend so let's see how many he can get through it's Jane and Fisher on the front row good jump for Fisher it's a staggered grid here great start for Ryle Harris he goes to the outside of Walton and it's Jeremy Gray up the inside trying to fight his way back from that penalty he could have been on pole position and it's Kim Jane who leads him into turn one all very courteous going through the first chicane there no major contact Reese McNally clipped the wall a little bit but nothing too drastic Trying to cover Cedars on the inside. We're on board with Medic in whack. A couple Whoa. of huge hits between himself and Ryle Harris. Ryle Harris is giving George no room on the exit there, but somehow these guys can destroy each other, bash into each other, <laughs> and they've got no damage. But three wide into the back chicane. This is messy. Oh, Jeremy Gray lifted. Thank goodness for that, because it was going to be chaos going into the back chicane. Harris is sideways. The tap out energy ute is a little slow off the exit, and this gives Medici a run. What are you talking about? Everyone oh. was side sideways. Medici <laughs> into the back of Harris, into turn 11, side by side, Whack. bashing doors. They've, none of them have got any mirrors left now. They've only done half a lap. Well, he's not going to be able to see what's going on behind him, but it's Walton who's going to try and get past both of them. They're still banging doors. This has gone on for the whole lap, <laughs> and it's going to go on again. Medici got to be careful, doesn't want to catch the tyres. Wanda Paints on board right now. We actually set a lap record in race one, and Walton will try and sneak up the inside and get that spot. Well done. Walton was just waiting for those guys to clear the way. They kept blocking the track. He couldn't find a way through, but good move up the inside there. And whoa! Oh. That's Todd Zani, the Easy Tax Holden has had a huge wreck on the back straight. Look at the damage to the right-hand side, and Ben Dunn was he a part of this. That's a different part of the racetrack. He's uh, backing it all the way down. Ben Dunn has my favourite sponsor, Red Ass Mexican <laughs> Food. He needed to eat some of that Mexican food before the start of this race, starting down the back. Oh, that's Wilson having a bit of a fight with Marjoram and the rest of the boys piling in. This is on board with Wilson. Up the inside. Oh, slam. Way too late on the brakes. It all just banked up on him. He wasn't looking far enough ahead. Somehow he got through. He no, what the... Wow, look at the background. <laughs> Rare spares on board. Is that Peter Burnett? who was up on two wheels. It looked like he was about to flip. He hadn't even got to the chicane yet. He's facing the wrong direction in every way oh, possible. And that's what's happened with Todd Zani. Major front-end damage on Todd Zani's car. This gives a bit more of an idea. This is on board with Wilson. Whoa, hold on. Oh, if he caught that edge of the kerb any more than he did then, that could have gone the whole way over. That was scary. That's a nine. Medecki needs a wheel on and He's got a lot of toe in there, but obviously some damage from that first lap contact with Royal Harris. He will be devastated at that. Oh, well, his race is done for. Petters STP safety car is out on track. We need a breather. Racing continues. In service paradise, it's the Armorall Gold Coast 600, and these are the Auto 1 V8 Utes, protected by Armorall, and Harris is lurking here. This is the battle for the lead behind Kim Jane, and he's so desperate for championship points, he could definitely do with a race win. Seed is a little bit back further in the pack. Here comes our championship leader right now, just pinching that right front as he takes the hairpin. This is the battle for second. Now, this is how Harris got that move done, just a bit big, of a dive bomb. Big lunge up the inside, you can hear the human ABS, he did a beautiful <laughs> job stopping that car because he was right on the limit. And Chris Walton, he's about to lose a mirror, I can tell you now, I'm psychic. <laughs> and it's gone, <laughs> told you. Yep, look how, that is a great shot, Rare Spares on board and these mirrors are pretty rare this weekend, they're getting smashed they all over be. the place. They will be by Monday, there'll be no <laughs> stock left anywhere. So this is the battle for the lead, pinching the front left on the entries, the weight evacuates the left front tyre. Roll Harris getting a good run out of there. He's driving like a man possessed and he's got his sights set on Kim Jane, that's for sure. You've got to be careful with these races that get shortened with safety cars. You never know when they're going to end. So race hard, get as many positions as you can as soon as you get half an opportunity and carry as much speed through turn one, two and three as possible. Maybe set up a passing move. Oh, that's Look at Harris doing it. just cutting that first chicane and got a great run. See, that's exactly what we're talking about. You know, sometimes when you're right behind someone, Whoa. risk a little bit more. Inside front lock, light contact, but nothing major. That's what this racing's all about. And they've 
Kim Jones come out in front, so he's going to have the run down to the back chicane. That was close. Great stuff, though. Awesome racing, man. This is such good stuff. The Utes are turning it on in the sunshine. Gold Coast, down the back straight. The beach is right next to them as they bounce over the curves once again, and Harris is going to try and get that run back once more. Here we go again. Oh, yellow flags, be careful. So, Roll Harris got a great run out of that back chicane, but can he do anything about it? I think he was clear with the I green think... flags, but oh. nearly caused his own yellow flag here. He's just saved it. <laughs> ABS, human ABS <laughs> again, and Kim Jones is back in back. front. This is great stuff. He's going to hang on the outside. If he can do this, he'll be in the right position for the right hander, and he finally gets the move made. I'm pretty sure he'll be OK with the yellows and greens down the back of the circuit as well. And this is interesting. We've had Harris take the lead, but Walton's dropped out a third. Something's happened to Walton. So I wonder where that's all gone wrong for Killer because Andrew Fisher's moved up to third, but this is big for the championship as the X-Force exhaust system fire out a big double flamer at the back of Kim Jane. Can he get the run on Ryle Harris, the kid through turn one? He needs to take as much of that curb as possible. He needs to take as much curb as Royal Harris has been taking, <laughs> but Kim Jane definitely not letting Royal Harris get away, and you can see oh. him getting a little bit hungrier on the entry to the turn one chicane this lap, so he's definitely learning something now with a lap or two under his belt. He's trying to get the speed in the exit, but it's the entry where he needs to find more speed coming into these chicanes. What's going on here? Rest Bears replay. Oh, Giannis Derham. That was messy. Looks like he may have had, and here we go, Ben Dunn weaving his way through the carnage, but looks like he may have had a uh, suspension failure or something through that back chicane. Yeah, that would explain why we had the yellow flags down there, but we're pretty sure that the move was legal between these two. A few laps left, and Roll Harris is the man at the front, and he's got a pretty good advantage now because David Cedars is back in the pack a little bit here, so this will shake up the championship a bit. Roll Harris with uh, carnage all over his car. Heavy damage on the right-hand side. His car actually looks like it's not tracking straight down the straight as well. Looks like it's crab walking a little bit, so not ideal. You can see it there, the little bit uh, rear end's a little bit out to the left, but anyway, he's uh, still trucking along a right out in front. He's powering on. Now, don't look now, but the Jesus Racing unit of Andrew Fisher is really catching up to these guys, and I wonder if he's going to make this a three-way battle for the lead with only a couple laps left around Service Paradise. This is going to get exciting. Here comes Fish. And Harris just got a couple of car, car lengths uh, gap. A little bit of safety margin, you know. Be able to relax a little bit. No, won't have to look in the mirror. Doesn't have to worry about where Kim Jane's going to stick his nose in next. But as you said, Fisher closing right up on the back of Kim Jane. So lap record as well has been taken back by Ryle Harris. Cedars came in with the weekend's... Uh, lap record, then Mediki took it in race one and now Ryle Harris has taken it back but this is all about the championship now Harris needs race wins, that's why we're seeing him drive so aggressively in Bathurst not afraid to use the doors, not afraid to use the bumpers, he needs to win races oh no, speaking of the championship the series leader is facing backwards in the final corner the mine site fencing Australia Ford has been turned around or as he looped it around and this is huge for the championship and now Harris in the wall Clearly, Harris just wanted to even up the damage on both sides of his car. We're talking about the right-hand side of his car being stoved in, so now the left-hand side's nice just and even. Now, but has this given the advantage to Kim Jane? Here comes the Bob Jane team. Art Suit goes to the left, looks to the right. Weaving all over the road. Not the spot to do it, though. He can't get a run through here, and Harris is so fast over the curbs. Look at that. Bang. Bounces straight over it. This is uh, what... Alex Prema, French V8 supercar driver, calls the baguettes down the back straight. Maybe he's just referring to what he wanted for lunch. And here comes Fisher. He's going to have a look. Oh, he came in too shallow. Locks the fronts. Lucky to scrape through that corner there. You can see Royal Harris is so good over the curbs and so good through that back chicane. It takes the pressure off himself when he gets down to turn 11, which is one of the couple of legitimate passing spots around this Gold Coast circuit. And Chris Walton, after a bit of a pit stop, we're not actually sure why he disappeared off the circuit, but he's popped back out into the field in about the same spot <laughs> he was in before, but obviously a lap down, unfortunately, for Chris. Nathan Pretty looking good in the points this weekend. Maybe on for a front row start for the final race in the Milwaukee Power Tools Ute and Jeremy Gray. If you didn't have that race penalty... Oh, now, what is this what happened to Cedars, I wonder? Oh, Jesse Dixon, no! No! What, what was he doing? He's taken out the championship leader. Poor Cedars, he was probably trying to stay out of trouble. Nice points lead, and that's what happens. But uh, we know how hard Royal Harris has been yep. going over the curbs. And, and this is the mirror. It's whimpering. It's more saying, than a mirror. please, Just I don't... Even, in, even in his car up. He's giving a wheel <laughs> on it. 
We just like him to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Service paradise. Come back perfectly symmetrical, that tap out. You don't worry about it. Final lap, and the battle at the front is still going on. Harris using those curves nicely to take a bit more of a uh, lead in this race. And Kim Jane making up a bit of ground through the back chicane there. He's, uh, he's getting better and better every lap he fo follows uh, Royal Harris through those curves. Pretty's just staying out of trouble. Now there's our man who's a lap down in Walton. Reese McNally coming home for another top five and maybe even on for a podium position here this weekend after a good qualifying session. Last few corners now. Royal Harris on the run home is about to take a huge step in the championship. He lost the championship lead at Bathurst. This weekend though, it's just been flipped upside down because Cedars is facing backwards and is outside the top 20. Unbelievable race in terms of the championship. He's been using the bumpers, he's been using the doors. He's been using the walls, he's been using all the circuit and a little bit more, but he's left nothing in the garage, and that's exactly what he needs to do, trying to fight back in the championship. So Royal Harris takes the race win. It's his fifth win on the streets of Surface Paradise. Claimed his first when he was just 19 years old back in 2005 on a weekend when the late Alan Simonson took out the, ray, uh, the round win. So that's a nice little touch there for Royal Harris. The car might not look the same as it did before the start of the race, but he's got the points, which is what he needs. Kim Jane home for second, but the big news there is Cedars way outside the top 20. Massive for the championship. We'll go over the page, and the rest of the boys coming home. Ken Wilson trying to consolidate his weekend after a personal best in qualifying as well. But Kylie's with our race winner. Raul, you looked like you were certainly on a mission in that one. Yeah, well, we started six, got a really good start. Um, you know, I was in position four. Uh, going into the first chicane, got on the inside of Mediki and into the hairpin, and uh, you know we had a bit of a coming together coming out. Uh, you know I thought I gave him enough room, and he thought I didn't. And we had a look at the footage afterwards, and we both sort of come to the agreement that it was just a racing incident, unfortunately. But so uh, yeah, charged through. We picked off Kimbo and uh, and Fisher, and uh, come home for the win. We needed it more than anything right at that moment, just to uh, get ourselves back in the points. And uh, unfortunately, Dave had a bad race, so I think we're back in the championship lead. Here's your chance to win a once-in-a-lifetime V8 Ute Racing experience at the Sydney Telstra 500 thanks to the new Hawkeye vehicle. You could win flights, accommodation and grandstand passes for you and a friend, plus a high-speed lead-out lap in a V8 Ute. And you get to watch the Ute race from pit lane. Then it's back to the V8 Ute paddock to collect your Hawkeye prize pack, plus lunch in the Hawkeye tent and a tour of Hawkeye in all its glory. For your chance to win the V8 Ute Racing Experience at the Sydney Telstra 500, head to the V8 Ute's website. It has been a massive round of the championship so far, and the good news is we still have one big race left. Wow, how about that for David Cedars? Can he consolidate in the final race of the weekend? We'll find out after this. You're watching the Auto One V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. This round, we profile mature age rookie Cameron Wilson, who's set to embark on a track record of a different kind, go-karting for charity. So the Guinness World Record uh, attempt that we're going for is the individual most distance travelled in 24 hours. The current record is 503 kilometres, which is about 3,050 laps at our go-karting Brisbane facility. We're aiming on doing 3,500 laps uh, we're trying to do over 600 kilometres, basically. So, uh, uh, very intense driving a go-kart for that long. Uh, is a very good workout on the body, to say the least. But uh, I just love it. And, uh, I, you know, from the deepest passion of my heart, I really want to raise a lot of money for Huntington's and do a good thing. He's not doing a good thing. He's doing a great thing, Cam Wilson. And he even had a few of the drivers in our series around cutting laps in the go-karts earlier in the week. So, a bit of practice for the boys, getting ready before this giant round of the championship. Penultimate round and the final race of the weekend sees Harris and Pretty on the front row together. And this is going to be very, very exciting. We've got some hard charges back in the field. Stephen White in 16th place. George Medecki behind him. Jesse Dixon in 21st place. We saw him spin out David Cedars in the last race. Cedars will start from 8th, as a matter of fact, on this one. There is the championship point score for NZ. Just six points separate Harris from Cedars. The road to Sydney. The final round of the championship will be coming up in a few weeks' time and we're away for the final race on the Gold Coast. Hawkeye on board with Craig Dontis as we fly down to Turn 1. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. 
Very tight. Another one of the hard charges who we normally see closer to the front. Craig Dont is deep in the pack there, racing with, An racing with Andrew Fisher. Oh, it's Wilson. Vogue Financial on board, getting close to the wall. Looks like Cedars actually cut the chicane at turn one. And these two were into each other in race number one, Marjoram and Wilson. So it gives him a bit more room this time by. Ryle Harris, your championship leader. If you can win this race, you will probably win the weekend. He clean swept this event back in 2011. Cedars won this event last year. And again, it's these two. We're going to go toe to toe. Pretty in second as the tap out energy swings through the big chicane. Cedars cut another chicane. He's run out wide. And it looks. Oh, Whoa, massive! Oh, huge crash. Huge impact. Marjoram's involved. Wilson's involved. McLeod picks his way through it. Baxter's tagged wow. as well. Mediki trying to find his way through. And the track is blocked. Oh, that's a scary, scary wreck in the chicane. The whole track has been blocked. Let's, let's actually hope that everyone's OK. That was a huge oh. impact. I haven't seen a ute that badly damaged for a long time. Auto one on board with Matty Nolan, who's just sitting there. Boys are getting out of their cars. Marjoram's waving to the crowd. Look at that car on the left. It's up to the windscreen. That's right. a huge crash. I've got no idea what happened, but we don't like to see accidents like that. He's not happy. He's just charged out of that car. Cam Wilson's feeling it. Oh, he's a sore boy. Those big head-on impacts, they do not tickle. I can tell you that from experience. Oh, red flag. So, yeah, the race has been red flagged. We'll wait to see if there's going to be a restart. Let's have a look what happened here. OK, so this is the run down to Turn 1. We've got Wakefield on the left and our championship leader on the right. They're banging doors going in. And so Cedars decides he's going to cut through that chicane. Is this going to be going on again in the hairpin? It is. Wakefield up the inside. Doesn't want to go giving up that spot just yet. He's been quite this weekend and they bang doors again out of turn four. All pretty clean so far though, nothing out of the ordinary but we know it's all about to get messy up here at the back chicane. So this is the rare spares replay. I, I remember seeing Cedars cut through the chicane. Oh, they touch on the way in. That's what causes Cedars to run wide. Oh, you can And this is how it's going to happen. Hold on! What was oh. Cedars doing? You can't cut the circuit and then just rejoin next to someone. If you cut through the circuit, you've got to back off the throttle and pull him behind. Here it is again. That's crazy stuff. Oh dear. Championship leader coming into the weekend has just fenced it and taken about half the field with him on this replay. You don't want to be doing that sort of so stuff. He's on the outside. Wakefield's just taking his line. Yeah. Oh! You can't rejoin the circuit without giving the guys who are on the circuit some space. So, look, I... Oh, I think that was Cedar's fault. It's the last thing he needed, leading the championship at the moment. Oh, oh. That gives send shivers down your spine. I felt that, I think. Oh. Alex and I both <laughs> jolted when we saw that. That is huge. And he's OK. He's OK. okay. That's the good news. So this is the wall cam, and this is how close it got. So he's already on the outside. That's Wakefield going by. They've just rubbed doors. Boom! How yeah. is the impact? It's Probably one of the advantages of these uh, V8 utes is there's nothing in the back. So with a big front to rear impact, that as we can see, the tray of the ute actually absorbs a lot of the impact there. And we've not seen for, a huge... Yeah, I mean, not the, for Marjorie. Yeah, but even Jeez. still, we've seen a massive accident. All the drivers have hopped out and walked away. So it says a lot about the safety of these cars. Look at the camera shaking in the wall. The concrete wall's shaking. The sh it's like an earthquake or a bomb going off. Look at these two, Wilson and Cedars welded together just about at the bumper. Hans' device is being stretched to the absolute limit. There's a, a number of Hans' devices which have been used very well then, I could tell you, but I think there's a few Utes going to oh. V8 Ute heaven after today. The Utes are back in the pits. The race has been declared, so it's a non-race. No points from that final race of the weekend, which will leave a bit of an interesting-looking point score for the rest of the boys. And Nathan Pretty, there you go. Is has taken out the weekend with 93 points, a tight one over Reese McNally. So pretty, your round winner after what was a massive weekend. This championship, you really want it. Valuable points, obviously not the way you want them, but you know, you're still in the hunt. That's what it's all about. I mean, I said I was going to be the, you know, I like being the hunter and uh, and it's turned out really good. I mean, a round win and, uh, you know, no no race wins or anything, but a round win and, and all the rest is exactly what we need. That's four for this year, so it's looking good. Ends their championship point score. Ryle Harris has just snuck that lead back from David Cedars, but Cedars could well be up for a points penalty after what happened. But Harris, at least he'll be happy to take that lead back. Well, Ryle Harris, it was a crazy uh, race there, which has been declared a non-race, but so I guess we revert back to, to the second race. And for you, it means you're leading the championship. Yeah, you know, it's uh, come after qualifying, you come up to me and ask me how I my weekend was going so far, I wouldn't be too happy. But yeah, no, we're back in the lead of the championship. It's going to be on for young and older homebush, that's for sure. Dave's going to come out fighting. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll 
obviously rebuild a new car or he'll hop in one of the spare cars and you know, it's going to be on. It's, you know, I didn't get a big points buffer because it was non-race. Uh, you know, it's not really the kind of way I would want to get a points buffer anyway is by Dave having a big accident. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll go into Homebush um, and we'll be neck and neck pretty much battling the whole time. So to check out the SS Induction's Hard Charger Award and Ben Dunn in Alex's favourite ute was out there passing 18 utes in race number two. Huge effort. Yokohama rookie point score and it's Elliot Barber. Didn't have a great weekend, but neither did Marjoram, obviously, with that last race crash and Jesse Dixon having a shocker as well here this weekend. But Nathan Pretty takes out the 100th ever round in the V8 Auto 1 utes and the next time that we see these guys, we're off to the streets of Sydney. Around Homebush, round eight of the championship is the final round in the early weeks of summer. It's been a big one. Thanks to everyone who's involved. I'm just going to let the pictures say goodbye. On the Gold Coast, the V8 Utes tore each other apart. Oh, Oh, that's it! Oh, huge crash. Huge impact! Oh, two. I felt that. Now they've landed in another concrete canyon with the series title still up for grabs. The kid wants to make it back-to-back -back titles, but he's going to be in for one hell of a street fight. and welcome to the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. It is time to crown a champ in the 2013 Auto 1 V8 Ute Series protected by Armour All. Teams and crews are getting ready for this final round of the championship and it's Ryle Harris who is pretty much the last man standing. The last round on the streets of the Gold Coast was out of control. Crunched cars, bashed panels, there was all sorts of drama going on, dented egos as well. But it comes down to this weekend, another concrete canyon here on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. There is no better place than deciding a champion right here. If anyone doubted the intensity of racing in the V8 Ute Series, then the Gold Coast round on the streets of Surfers Paradise surely sorted that out. And look, oh, that's it! Oh, huge crash. Huge impact. Marjoram's involved. Oh, that's a scary, scary wreck of the chicane. Marjoram is going to be in for one. Through it all, defending champion Ryle Harris emerges as the new championship leader. And he'd love nothing more than to be one of only three drivers in the history of the series to win back-to-back -back titles. He also comes to Sydney inspired by a recent test drive with Ford Performance Racing, a reward for winning last year's championship. Last year I was probably a lot more nervous. I'm a lot more comfortable this weekend. I know what I've got to do. Um, and uh, yeah, the, you know we've had a reliable car all year. That's why we're that's why we're, we're in the position we're in at the moment. So you know we haven't had the fastest car all year. Uh, I haven't got one pole or anything like that. We've got a lap record at Gold Coast, but um, you know considering the bad round we had at Bathurst, we're pretty lucky to be in this position right now. With 140 points up for grabs across the weekend, there are six drivers mathematically in contention. The driver best place to challenge Harris is Reese McNally, who sits second in the championship, just 39 points behind. It's been an amazing comeback for the West Australian, who nearly walked away from the sport last year after struggling for speed and becoming disillusioned. We've probably taken a lot of people by surprise. You know, we've flown sort of under the radar for a fair bit. I think now we're sort of really showing that, you know, we are a front running team. We can run at the front and we do have the pace. David Cedar's round at the Gold Coast and subsequent 90 championship points penalty for his involvement in the carnage has cost him dearly. He went from leading the championship to being back in fourth, but he's back with a new car and will do everything he can to put the pressure on. It's just one of those things. It's a, the Ute Series. It's rough and tumble racing. It's hard championship to win and. You, you just can't take it for granted. Look, I look like I was smelling roses at Gold Coast and then race two turns around, I get turned around and then I'm back in the pack and then unfortunate race three and, and now I'm back in fourth position. Another hard luck story has been third place Nathan Pretty, who also copped his fair share of penalties and mechanical dramas while being in a position to win the championship. He's bracing himself for some fierce racing on this punishing street circuit. It's rough and tumble. I mean, the, the curbs are just so harsh around here that 
our cars, when we hit them, I mean, we're nearly rattling teeth out and all the rest, so I might have to go and buy myself a mouth guard just so that I can actually hit them a bit harder and so on. But it is actually, you just got to take it by the, the grit of your teeth, really, and, and wrestle the car around here. And we had a good car here last year. I finished second at McConville last year, and there's no reason why we can't go one better now. He's not in the series. And sharing equal points in fifth is Kim Jane and Chris Walton, both with plenty of incentive to snatch a podium position. Meantime, Elliot Barber has wrapped up the Rookie of the Year title and has earned a test drive with Erebus Motorsport. He'll relish the chance to put one of the team's Mercedes-Benz AMG V8 supercars through its paces. It's pretty cool, it's a big honour, so that was the aim for the year, to try and win that. It's been a pretty competitive year with the other guys, I think it was six of us at the start of the year, so yeah, I'm wrapped. While drivers put it all on the line at the last street circuit, there's an even greater risk-reward on the line here at Sydney Olympic Park, as the V8 Ute drivers battle it out for their final chance for championship glory. To the NZ Drivers' Championship, and yes, it is a thriller here in Sydney. Ryle Harris just 39 points up on Reese McNally, who's just snuck up on everybody pretty. Just two more points behind him. And David Cedars, after that points penalty that we alluded to, has just started to fade away, but thanks to the armour roll pole position and a bank of points, he is now definitely within a shot of the guys ahead of him. The mine site fencing Australia Ute takes $1,000 for his fourth pole position of the year, and this one is now definitely going to go down to the final race of the weekend. Three races around the streets of Sydney Olympic Park, a magnificent venue to see off this final race of the championship. Can Roel Harris join the elites as a two-time champ? We're about to find out. You're watching the Auto One V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. This round, we profile a driver who's copped more than his fair share of crashes, but he loves coming back for more. The owner of Big Gun Racing, Peter Burnett. Well, I think I've been cursed a little bit with the crashes I've had over the years. Oh, hold on. Despite all the crashes you have and all the incidents you have in the Ute Racing, it's, it's still the love of it, the passion I have, and I just love it. It's just a lot of fun, a lot of good guys, and we also all go out there not intentionally hit each other, but it happens, and I think... A lot of the spectators love it and the crowd loves it and we all do too, so as long as not too much damage. So. <laughs> He certainly brings a certain level of excitement to the racetrack. George Meadicke alongside myself, Chad Nalon, here on the streets around Sydney Olympic Park as the boys are getting ready for their second race. We'll take some highlights from the first race, and it was Walton winning this battle off the start line. Excellent start by Walton, and you just you can see him move, move across the front of David Cedars there. Nathan Pretty trying to cover against Kim Jane, but Walton, an excellent start, stacks the guys up heading into Turn 1. Such a long run down to Turn 1 here at Sydney Olympic Park, and tight on the brakes, Shockingly clean for the Auto 1 V8 Series down there. Extremely downwards. clean, wasn't it? <laughs> now, this battle was a pretty good one early on between Cedars and Kim Jane. It's a long run down Dawn Fraser Ave. Championship contenders looking really, really aggressive this early in the race. So, David Cedars trying to pull ahead. Obviously, you can see uh, Nathan Pretty and, and Ryle Harris there behind there, hoping to not let him stretch too far in front. On board with the Thirsty Camel is oh, our Rookie of the Year, Elliot Barber. <laughs> Struggles to pull up the Guide Dogs Victoria. Falcon in time. Not making any friends out there at the moment. That's, that's a tough one there. Reese McNally, another one of our championship contenders, making huge moves, trying to get through the pack, salvage as many points as he can after a disappointing qualifying. Yeah, 13th him in qualifying up the inside of Peter Dunn. Hold your breath. Oh, these streets around this amazing Olympic venue. A nervous place to have a championship battle, but he managed to get the job done there. Reese McNally, this is Nathan Pretty, hard on the brakes. Then the Dawn Fraser Ave once again gets the job done on Kim Jay. Now this raged on for a couple more corners here. The Milwaukee Power Tools Ute now up to third, but Ryle Harris is in the middle of this, and with all this warring going on, he'd be a nervous boy. Yeah, he would be a nervous boy. So we can see he's, uh, he's right behind the guys. We see Ryan Hansford towards the outside. Huge passing move here. Definitely one oh, line for the race. <laughs> he's that. The HT Racing Ute swinging around the outside, and. You can kind of pick on the championship leader at times because he wants to try and stay out of trouble. It's Andrew Fisher hanging onto the back of them. But this guy was literally streets ahead. Chris Walton taking the double checkers here at Sydney Olympic Park. And uh, he was really, really far up the road 
from Cedars, who managed to come home for second. Important for the championship there. Yeah, Cedars doing almost everything he could to uh, to combat that championship deficit. We see uh, Nathan Pretty across the line behind him, and you know a lot of these championship guys had a good, clean race there. So we see it uh, closing up as we get through the weekend. So four guys get some points back on Royal Harris, our series leader, as Walton becomes the 10th different winner this year. Seven seconds, what a lead. I mean, what a fantastic achievement. So very well done, Chris, headed into race two. He's looking pretty quick this weekend. There's the man. We're all watching Royal Harris, the tap out energy ute, as it pulls up a bit further back in the pack, the reverse grid race this one. We've taken nine, flipped them around and chucked them on the grid. And would you believe it, Reese McNally ends up getting the draw to go off the front row alongside Gary Baxter in his last ever race. I mean, it shows that, that aggression from McNally has paid off. You know, he's a championship contender and he's doing all the right things that we expect to see from a guy of that calibre. He needs to cash in on this race further back through the field. Jerry McLeod, Maverick as we call him, he's been up in the skies. We'll tell you a bit more about that one as we go through. Dylan Thomas having a first here this weekend. Adam Marjoram in a different car to the one that we saw wrecked earlier. He's in a different of the Williams Race Tech Utes. Yeah, and they've been struggling with uh, overheating gremlins and all that sort of thing right through the weekend. So be, uh, let's hope he's got it figured out for race two. Good to see Michael Armand and Jack LeBrock on the grid as well. A couple of young guns in the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series making a return to the series for those two. As we get set for race two, the reverse grid race. Baxter alongside McNally. The straight co Ute is going to be tight. It looked like maybe Baxter had the jump. How are we going to go with this long run down into turn one? Absolutely neck and neck. Look at that. These guys are side by side. Uh, I'd say McNally's oh. probably got the edge here if he holds it out. But tell you what, Gary Baxter's not going to let it happen easily. Gee, tough racing. They're still side by side. They managed to just rub mirrors without fencing each other. Good stuff further back through the field. And once again, looking clean. The approach to the turn two, three, and four chicane, and it's McNally who's going to be bravest under brakes. There's the uh, there's the old salty old sea dog, uh, Gary Baxter. <laughs> he knows he's not going to gain anything by going around the outside there, so he's done a smart move, in my opinion, solidified himself in second, and uh, is just ahead of our championship leader, Ryle Harris. So this is good news for Harris. He's right where he wants to be right now. He's got the majority of his championship contenders in his mirrors, but that was desperate stuff for the Stratco Commodore. Needed to lead this race, has to win it have any hope. Now, Ryle Harris, in terms of the championship, needs to have a 35, or sorry, 36 point advantage. If they stay the way they are right now, we'll crunch the numbers, but it's looking like it's going to be pretty close to that. These guys are not leaving an inch on the walls of, on even on this first lap. One of the guys that I saw who was really fast through practice and wasn't quite so fast in qualifying, Ryan Hans, but I keep an eye on him throughout this race. He's definitely got a lot of pace. Yeah, it was a race winner up in uh, Sandown, or down in Sandown as here comes Chris Killerwalt and pinches that right front. Did a good job to get the car stopped, actually. Man, that guy is on the move. Obviously, he started this race last of the fast cars uh, from our first race, and already he's picked up two spots, and those two guys are probably two of the hardest, the hardest cars to pass in this whole series. So good start for Chris Killerwalt, and how far up this field can he go? Oh. That was uh, Kim Jane running a bit wide there. Bit of a strange spot to do it. So maybe he's got some kind of brake issues or something early on. We've heard no end of issues with shock absorbers around these tough curbs. And it's not just the walls at this track, George, that can kill cars. It is not. And the thing is, to go fast here, you need to hit those curbs. And, and I wonder if, uh, if Nathan Pretty's got his mouth guard in for this <laughs> one because definitely these guys aren't holding back. And those curbs, they're, they're what we call a sausage curb. They're very round and very, very aggressive on the car. And it's very tough to know just how much you can take without actually bending a shock or, or, or breaking a wheel or anything like that. There is the man we were talking about, and he's got Cedars up the inside having a look. So too is Andrew Fisher on our series leader. You've got to be careful. What? How does Ryle Harris play this? He's got guys that are hungry for a top three finish behind him, a local guy in Fisher. Does he just let him through, play the points game, or does he race him? I mean, the whole thing that Ryle Harris is going into this weekend is conserve, conserve, conserve. We're seeing a very mature Ryle Harris this season. He's, uh, he does look like he's got it all together, and hopefully he's just going to... I think if someone really, really wants it, he'll just let him go. Fishtail living up to his name. <laughs> Getting a little bit sideways and, oh, trying to... Oh, he's, he's definitely got, a, yeah, he's got an issue. He's pulled over to the side of the road and Kim Jane's gone by. Right after hitting one of those curbs. So it says to me it might be a broken shock or, or something like that because the car still has drive and is still moving forward. It sounds like on the radio chatter he's reporting of maybe a flat tyre, which is a bit unusual. He was on it pretty quick, though. But I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being something like a shock as well, the way that these guys are smashing these curves. Well, I mean, we're so early in the race here. We start with such low pressures. It's very, very easy to pinch a tyre against those curbs. And, and again, it's all that load that goes through the suspension is also going through those tyres. So it wouldn't surprise me one bit. I saw plenty of that happening. Up in the, uh, yeah, again, I reckon Kim Jones got something going on here. That car is really sluggish under brakes. It's either going long in the corners, not pulling it up in time, or he's having to brake a lot earlier than everyone else. 
We'll see how that pans out at the end of the big, long main straight as they wind him up. In the meantime, Ryle Harris has earned himself a bit of clear space here. So he's got a nice little bit of breathing room. He's got some hot wall around himself. He's definitely looking to protect <laughs> that, uh, that championship lead. All right, well, the championship's up for grabs. A quick break. We'll resume after this. Welcome back to Sydney Olympic Park. Race two for the... 1-1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. Reese McNally is your leader, trying to claw back some points on our championship leader, Royal Harris, as Kim Jane is fighting the good fight here. Ryan Hansford all over the back of him. We're hearing Kim Jane has a clutch issue, and around this sort of place, you're always on the thing, especially with these cars. They've got a road car gearbox and all sort of things, so you do need to use the clutch in, in the gear changes, not unlike a V8 supercar. Nice work as Chris Walton. Oh, I was holding my breath there for a second. They all gave each other a lot of room. At one point, it was looking like we might be three wide, trying to fit them all into one corner, but they worked it out. Now, Nathan Pretty and David Cedar is amongst this battle here. They need to try and make a few more spots up if they'd have any hope, but it's all slipping away from them right now with Ryle Harris ahead of them in this race. It can pretty much scratch the names of these guys out of the championship. Pretty might be in with a shot at the end of this one. Now, what's going on here? Rare Spares replay. Oh dear. Uh, into the car. I drove last round. You yeah. see the boat works holding, spinning around there. Ooh. An unfortunate victim there. Elliot's obviously just outbraked himself a little bit. I Everyone else getting through nice and clean. I appreciated Michael Armand's effort to try and get that right. He gassed it up to try and catch it, but couldn't quite save it. Jacques Villeneuve style. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember that one. <laughs> Down at the hairpin. Jacques wasn't quite coast. so successful, I don't think. <laughs> it didn't quite work out for him. All right, but, uh, one thing I want to say is if we can see Chris Walton drive like this every race for a championship, I don't think there's a guy that can touch him. He, When he's in, on his game, that guy is untouchable. He passes with such aggression and with such, you know, force that if he can actually pull it off for a full season, I think next year, you know, he's going to be one of the men to watch. You've got a very good point. He was last year's uh, Rookie of the Year. He went over to New Zealand on a couple of occasions this year, absolutely spanked the Kiwis, comes back here, and now he's getting the job done here in Sydney this weekend. He could be a real contender for the title next year. Ryle Harris, the championship leader, and the man that they're trying to chase down. Nathan Pretty, on adjusted points right now, is the only guy that'll probably be able to challenge him for the title, but it's going to be almost a walk through a job in race three, the way they're sitting at the moment. Yeah, exactly right. We've got the in-car with, uh, with Craig Dontis as he cruises along behind Kim Jane, who we know is kind of wounded, limping his way through this race. He's going to be looking to make it as far as he can. David Cedars on the back of Nathan Pretty here. These guys, obviously, such close championship contenders. They're, uh, they're battling it out, but at the same time, drivers of such skill. You know, it's good to see these guys fighting hard, fighting clean. All right, let's see how this one's going to pan out. I wonder how David Cedars is feeling after challenging that decision up on the Gold Coast. It was probably a hiding to nothing, really. If he didn't do it, he was probably going to be 35 points away from not being able to win it anyway. Well, I, def I definitely thought about that. As we see uh, Fisher here having a lock-up. Oh, just trying to get the thing pulled up. Oh, wow, that's the shutter. Look at the rear of the... That's the shock, man. Around. I'm telling you, he's broken a shock on those curves. So we can see he's limping away there. These this track is so hard on these cars, and we're seeing evidence of it here in race two. Right, well, OK, so he's come into the pits thinking that it was a flat, and they've sent him straight back out. So that would maybe suggest that it was a broken shock, like you were saying. They didn't bother to change that tyre. This is that battle again between Pretty and Cedars. They're battling for six on the racetrack, and this is important for mainly Pretty because he's mathematically the guy that's going to take it to this guy right now. Just got back from Vegas, which is all right for some. He's hanging out with the Tap Out Energy crew over there, Roll Harris. Living the life, Roll Harris. He's I been going on, going on there. European holidays with his, <laughs> his fiancée, going to go to America with Tap Out guys. I mean, geez, what am I going to do? I've got to get back into you to have this sort of life. <laughs> what are you doing sitting next to me? You should be out there racing like you were last week down, in, uh, down at the Gold Coast. We'll see you in the Dunlop Series here this weekend. For those playing at home, yes, this is the track where George Slick Medici did claim his first... Uh, ever you win series event win back in 2009 so it does hold some happy memories for you yeah it does i uh, i enjoyed this track for the moment i set foot on it and, and this weekend you know we're fast but uh, not necessarily getting the results we want so we'll see we'll see how we go but uh, i'll just do my best and we'll see how it figures out they limp by the lap car of fisher the milwaukee power tools car has been so strong on street uh, on the street circuit this year he was a winner in clipsville he was a winner in townsville he looked to have the speed to go on with it maybe up in the Gold Coast until that third race was cancelled. It's, uh-oh, he, uh, this is good. Chris Walton, he's all over the back of Ryle Harris. He's got past Hansford. He's charging. You know exactly what's going through Ryle Harris' <laughs> mind. Is that if Chris wants this this bad, I'm going to let it happen. You know, he's obviously got his other contenders. Uh, uh, he's got a bit of breathing space to them, obviously, with um, with the exception of Reese up front. So I think uh, I think we'll see a very um, a very cautious Ryle Harris here, very taciturn Ryle Harris. But Chris Walton, uh-uh. No. 
He has nothing to lose and everything to gain here this weekend. And definitely a championship scenario is out for him in terms of the points, but he can definitely win himself a round victory. He did have a win up on the streets of Adelaide this year, had it taken away from him for pushing one or two guys out of the way on, on, on route to victory. And it's probably going to be at the run down to turn one where he might be able to get this job done. And Roll Harris would be a very wise young race car driver to let him go. Well, those, uh, those incidents are the opposite side of the coin for an aggressive driving style like this. Sometimes you just can't pull them off. So the, uh, the things that make it so exciting are also things that make it so exciting. <laughs> He just gets to stay out of trouble a bit more, Chris Bolton, but he, he's quite happy to be the bad boy in the series. He said so himself. He likes being the cat amongst the pigeons, so to speak. And like I said, if he can make that, if he can make this kind of performance a regular thing, you know, he's a real threat for the championship. It'd be, uh, be great to see him up where he deserves to be. Through the chicanes. He's going to be careful with the curbs. Doesn't want to break a shock. Doesn't want to step out of line and maybe just clip a concrete wall. It can happen so quickly around this venue. The championship is definitely not a done deal just yet. Man, Walton's got speed on Harris as we see down the bottom there. Three tenths, seven tenths and a second over the last three races. So this man, this is the man on the move and his teammate right behind him, Ryan Hansford, not going any slower either. There you go, he got the drive, didn't he, right then? The tap out energy, you just swung out a little bit and up to the, oh, it's not usually a passing spot, but Royal Harris was smart enough to let him go. It's gonna leave him vulnerable though, because now Hansford's gonna want a piece of him. Everybody picks on the series leader when they're racing for a championship. Oh, he's not going to let him have it. He's going to go defensive at the end of Dawn Fraser Ave. Such a crazy braking zone, that one. Up, down, up, down. Lots of bumps in the middle. And with these cars, they actually have a, a servo-assisted brake pedal, so it's not actually that hard to press the brakes. So it's very easy to lock a tyre, very easy to lock a wheel. And as you're coming up and over those curbs, you find yourself varying the pressure in that braking zone. So in, out, in, out, trying to maximise the amount of braking capacity the car has. So it's always very dangerous if you're going to go defending down there because you could oh. have somebody lock a brake and clean you up. That could be the end of your championship. All right, we're still sorting this one out. The streets around City Olympic Park. Roll Harris is doing enough at the moment, but he's got one more race and a few more laps of this one yet to go. Final round of the championship in the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. And that is the guy in the black Falcon Ute. It's the Tap Out Energy Ute, as these guys from the back are still brawling. Cedars just missing the breaking point there. Maybe a bit blindsided, getting it too, too close to the back of Yeah, he's Pretty. not going to let it go easily, as we see. Oh, oh Craig Dantas. Rest Bear's replay of a massive lockup. Now, that bonnet of the Thirsty Camel Ute, a bit bent as it is, actually, up for auction. Uh, just go to v8utes.com.au and uh, there's more problems to this. Yeah, exactly right. You can see him getting shaken around. That thing is flat, flat, flat. So I think that's probably one of the causes for that lockup. Uh, it'd be a shame to see a guy like that out of this race. But uh, again, our man of the match so far, Chris Walton, making huge moves. Now set his sights on Gary Baxter. One of the things now as well, these street circuits, they're like canyons for hot air. And, and these cars, as they move through the pack, the brakes get hotter, the engine gets hotter, and the car gets slower. But now that uh, Walton's got clean air, a couple of laps to uh, to catch up to the back of Gary Baxter, he's going to get his brake temps under control, he's going to get his tyre temps under control. So I'll be watching out for him when he gets there. He's been driving like a madman all weekend. He's been very fast. He was off the front row in qualifying as well. So do you reckon that maybe his tyres might be a bit shot when he gets to race three? Because we have very slim uh, selections of tyres for the weekend. Uh, one of the... Whoa! See what I mean? <laughs> and that's how you do it. That's how you do it. One of the big things about the street circuits is because... Oh, oh how that's nice. Is that. <laughs> that's as close as you can get to, uh, to, to throwing it all away, but exactly <laughs> making it perfect. So one of the things about the street circuits, because there's a bit less grip than a normal circuit, tyres actually generally last a little bit longer. It's just the heat, man. It's these things can't stop for such a heavy car for so long with no cold air, uh, the heat is, the, the brakes, you know, really start to suffer after a while. We have heard reports of a few guys, uh, the middle pedal getting a bit long towards the end of this one. With all the extra heat, there are a couple of really strong, major braking parts of this circuit as well. I was down in Parc Ferme after qualifying and one of the cars, the brakes caught on fire after qualifying. So there's definitely, there's huge amounts of heat coming through and, and these things, you know, these utes, they take a lot of effort to stop and they've got big horsepower, big brakes, and but, you know, there's still a lot of mass moving around. Very brave drivers around this amazing little circuit as we're getting closer and closer to the wall. Is that a team thing? Is that a team thing? Team orders. Chris Walton doing it, Ryan Hansford doing it. These guys are, are really, really pushing right to the end of this race. We're at lap 10 and 12. <laughs> team orders work out there and paint the walls, boys. We're going to cause us 
some serious show this weekend. Roel Harris has finally got himself a bit of breathing room out there. He survived Chris Killer Walton coming through. Big shout out to, uh, to Chucky Baxter this weekend. Final round for him in the championship after 11 very strong years. Hasn't even missed a round since he joined the competition uh, a long, long time ago. Back in 2002, I think it was. Uh, third overall in 04, third overall in 05 and a massive representative of the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series and looks like he could be on for a strong second if he can hold off a very fast approaching Chris Walton with just two laps to go. Well, he's only going to make two more laps and part of our driver's agreement in with our driver's standards stuff is that we're allowed to block in the last two laps. <laughs> so I'll be seeing a bit of that from uh, Chucky Baxter. Now, this is Fonzie Mullen with some issues and uh, getting very smoky out the back of that car. It was his birthday the other day, I think I heard somebody say as we're riding on Hawkeye on board. We've got the beautiful Hawkeye getting around this weekend. That's Jero McLeod getting uh, passed by uh, one of our championship down. combatants. Yeah, so he was up in the skies with Matt Hall, Red Bull pilot recently. He passed out at 9.5 Gs, did Maverick. So maybe he's, maybe he's not quite living up to the Maverick nickname there. <laughs> not Top quite, gun. not quite. But uh, as you see here on screen, Reese McNally doing the job we all expect him to do as a championship contender. Uh, very, very smooth. You can see him calm behind the wheel very precise with his inputs, very crisp with his gear changes, and he's just managing that gap to the guys behind. I think he's doing a fantastic job and all we could expect him to do. Yeah, he was a winner of the reverse grid race up in, uh, that was well, down in Sandown actually, race number two in Sandown. Now somebody's sounding very sick out there right now. It sounds like somebody maybe dropped a cylinder or something. There he goes right there. That one's yeah. sounding more like a tractor than an Auto 1 V8. These sweet X-Force exhaust systems do sound really nice around the concrete as they did up in Surface Paradise. Last lap now for Reese McNally. And the way that they're sitting out there is going to leave a very interesting championship scenario. Now, the Tap Out Energy guys were hoping for a 36-point lead at the end of this one to wrap up the title. It's 35 points. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling one. Talk measly point short. Talk about nail-biting. But again, Royal Harris doing a fantastic job. He's obviously stabilised that gap to the car behind, which, you know, given, uh, given right hands for the speed, is no mean feat. So very well done to him. Sounds like anti-lag out there when they go banging down the gears. Obviously not, because these things are natural aspirated V8s. We're not talking about world rally cars. As we're riding on board with Reese McNally, the man who looks set to take out this second race of the week and fast part of the track. Make sure that you come home clean from here. What's it like in this situation where you just got to focus on getting the thing home? Well, pretty much, you know, I uh, I did find that here at, at Homebush. I had a big lead in one in a couple of the races. And the biggest thing is maintaining your concentration because this place does not take any prisoners and you really need to, uh, to keep your eyes on to make sure you can make it to the finish. Now, this is interesting. Baxter got caught up in traffic there for a second. It looked like he was trying to get by two lappers at once and it's put him back into the clutches of Chris Walton. We'll have to wait and see how that one pans out. Here we go. He's going to go blocking to the inside. He doesn't want to give up this second spot. Jeez, Jeremy McLeod. He's not even been given any blue flags at the moment. So I don't know uh, what's going on there, but he's definitely getting his hands dirty with a real battle behind him. Yeah, it's a bit average from Jared. He should be pulling over to the side and making moves for these guys. They, uh, they're they fighting on the last lap of the last race for a podium position. So you see, right, see uh, Reese McNally pulling across the start-finish line to a well-deserved win. Yeah, that was a tape to checkers win for Reese McNally. Pretty convincing one, actually, and doing what he could for the championship. But with this guy coming home where he is, that's going to rule out a few more championship contenders. Ryle Harris doing enough so far this weekend. But because Nathan Pretty finished two spots behind him, this one technically is going to go to the final race of the weekend. So watch this space. You don't often see uh, the lights flashing for a fourth place finish, but I guarantee you Ryle knows exactly what he did just then. So McNally claiming a win, just like he did here back in 2011. Or as you've claimed a victory, I guess that championship, you're really searching for that podium, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. You know, qualifying this morning definitely didn't go to plan. We qualified 13th, which was, uh, you know, pretty terrible on our behalf. So, um, you know, obviously we picked a few off in uh, the first race and the start from pole and sort of lead the whole race. You know, it was really good and scored some vital points. So, uh, fingers crossed, we're still in with a shot and, you know, sort of clawed back a few from uh, this morning's efforts. The V8 Utes are well and truly built tough to withstand the rigours of racing, but they may have met their match. Meet Hawkeye, the Australian-made military vehicle designed and built by Talus that will lead the Utes out onto the grid at key races next year. The uh, V8 Utes being all Australian and this being an Australian vehicle built in Bendigo, I think it's a great connection and for 2014 we're going to even be supporting it more and more. When it comes to durability, Hawkeye is in a league of its own. 
vehicle itself uh, has really been designed for uh, really for blast aspects of it. So when uh, for our, our troops over uh, overseas in, in areas they're working in, that the vehicle itself does have a lot of blast protection. So there's a lot of uh, the glass itself is good for ballistic protection for being shot at, um, but also underneath the vehicle, the, the plan is to actually ensure that the soldiers inside have been kept very, very safe in a, a, an aspect of a blast scenario. So while the V8 Utes need durability and pace to perform at their best, Hawkeye is light and agile, yet boasts strength and speed for operations in the harshest conditions. Yeah, it's been really designed to ensure that the uh, the vehicle itself for mobility works really well. So it can, you know, climb hills, go go uh, in, in areas that uh, is really quite restricted. It is a four-wheel drive vehicle, uh, runs a, a dual transfer case, uh, and with the performance of a, a twin turbo engine, gives us the uh, the performance we need for the capability. For more info, head to the V8 Utes website. So just one race remains in the championship. Ryle Harris now just has to worry about finishing the final race to become a two-time champion. Can he do it? We're about to find out. V8 Ute celebrates 10 years of highlights with the release of an action-packed DVD, featuring the best events, the biggest names and the heaviest hits that only V8 Utes can deliver. Find it in store just in time for Christmas. No idea how they plan on fitting 10 years of highlights onto the one DVD. It'll be Walton and Cedars off the front row for the final race of the year, and importantly, Roel Harris off the third row. Uh, no Stephen White dog, White for this final race of the year, and Kim Jane, they've both withdrawn from the weekend. Yeah, exactly right. It's a bit of up and down season for Stephen White. Hope to see him back next year. It's been some amazing promise. Yeah, with the Erebus crew, he's been quite quick so far. There's the guy, though. He has to finish this race to win the championship. If he doesn't, Pretty can win this race tie the championship and win it on a count back. And it's never a foregone conclusion in the VAU series, is it? We see the lights go out. David Cedars, good start from the outside. Also, uh, Reese McNally, nice start from row two. So, the journey begins for Ryle Harris to become a two-time champ. We're riding on board the Jesus Racing Ute of Andrew Fisher. Look how deep they have to go. Waiting, waiting to turn in. Three wide on the way in. Gets narrow on the way out. Oh, hands for sideways. Maybe Gary got, Baxter yeah. let him get away with it. Baxter's final ever race as well. Gee, there are a few talking topics in this one as we go flying up to the Cooper chicane. Turn two, three, four. Hold on, everybody. Roll Harris, desperate to stay out of trouble. He's giving himself oh. some room. Wakefield, big move up the inside. They're all going to try and find Quite optimistic whatever way they can to get across. It's Ben Dunn involved with this one. We're riding on the back of Reese McNally as he goes running away, trying to salvage what's left of this championship battle for him. Yeah, Reese just needs to ch channel his uh, performance from race two. He's catching up to Nathan Pretty. I think he's got the speed to make a move. He just needs to keep his head down and keep pushing. Bouncing through the chicanes. Ryle Harris with every tiny bump. He'll be thinking, did I hit that chicane too hard? Did I rattle that curb in a way that might break a shot? Because he's giving Hanson plenty of room. Yeah, nice wide line he's given him there. He knows what he needs to do, and he's not going to jeopardise it in any way by, by trying to tussle and fight with these guys. We'll see Gary Baxter having a look to the inside. And again, and again, he's... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, oh. I thought he was going to maybe let him have that one. That was more Gary pulling out, I think, of that one. He's uh, Gary knows he doesn't want to take, uh, take uh, Ryle out, so he's going to sort of make that move nice and clean whenever he can. Rest bears on board. We're riding on the, or in the thirsty camel ute of Craig Dontis, the South Aussie. Had a crack on the Shannon's V8 Supercar showdown this year as well. Eventually taken out by Todd Hazelwood, who was having a drive with you this weekend. Uh, had a, a test as well with the Ford Performance Racing guys, which was also something that Roel Harris has done since we last saw the racing. Nathan Pretty had a test with the HRT guys as well. There's been Ute guys branching out everywhere of late as we go looking above Craig Dontis. It's a confined workspace that you guys work in. What a cool shot that is. You know, you can see him down through the gears, that Motec dash there going down through the gear numbers. Oh, oh geez. Danny Buzz. And it's going to be a tight spot to try and get the flick turn done. He's got Jero Gray for company as well. Now, did you see on the weekend, uh, it was actually Chris Walton. I'll have a quick replay of this one. They both make the same mistake. Chris Walton tried doing the flick turn down there and put it head on into the wall. It was definitely one of the funnier moments of the year. Rest best replays, the boys get it pointed in the right direction. That was the last mistake Chris Walton made all weekend. He's been just about unstoppable ever since. He's up the front of this one as well with Cedars just ahead of him in the lead. Chucky Baxter. We say goodbye to a bit of an Aussie legend of this sport now. Yeah, he's been an absolute stalwart of this series and 
man, he's produced some performances over the years, so it's a real shame to see him go. Obviously, we can see from this oh. weekend, there's a lot of life in the old dog yet. Ben Dunn's got a lot of life in those ties. It won't for long, though, if he keeps burning them at the end of the Dawn Fraser Avenue like that. That very difficult, undulating part of the circuit as we ride on with Andrea Fisher, Folk Financial on board, looking back to Jesse Dixon, chasing away. Having a bit of a move out, you can see them moving around in a straight line. Those guys are trying to get cold air to the brakes, try and cool them down, because just when you're in this big pack, the car just gets hotter and hotter, the brakes get hotter and hotter, and the car will just you know, slowly lose that braking efficiency. So you'll see a lot of these guys, especially the wily ones, you know, pulling out in a straight line, trying to feed cold air to that car and help it sort of recover in those straights in between the corners. Cabin temperatures on days like today must Massive. be excruciating. Massive. I climbed out of the development series car the other day and, and it I'd looked like I'd just got out of the pool. It was just <laughs> insane and we got cool suits and all sorts of things. So these guys are definitely uh, doing it tougher than I am. Dontas will be a bit of a thirsty camel himself right now as he will try and have a drink and last out this 10 lap journey, the final race of the calendar. Next year's calendar has been released by the way. We shadow the exact same championship scenario that we had this year as we go racing in five states and a territory as well. This is the, the double view. Now off the right-hand side, we're looking back from Andrew Fisher, the Jesus Racing Ute, local driver this weekend. Part of, uh, well, we've got a few local boys, seven in total. Seven Sydney siders racing this weekend in the series. Yeah, Jesse Dixon sandwich between the two of them. Now, one of our rookie contenders, unfortunately didn't take it out this year, but showed a lot of promise throughout the year. So it's pretty cool. We can see the camera facing forward at him, the camera facing backwards at him, and he's doing a great job to try and menace Andrew Fisher coming through the fast back part of this course. A podium at this track, his home track in the first year, back in 2009. Remember that year, 2009 here? I mean, you'd remember it well. I would remember it well. I don't want to hold on to it too <laughs> tight, you know. It's getting, getting to be a little while ago now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, had a great weekend in the Ute here. And, and uh, you know, that was the, the weekend that launched my career in America. Marcus Ambrose saw me race that weekend and thought, you need to come over to the States and the rest is history. Very, very cool. Oh, tight stuff. I thought Hansford was going to clean up Ben Dunn then. We still have seven laps left to run, and a championship is still up for grabs. The final round of the championship, the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All. The series is winding down in the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All, and Wayne Wakefield has got the job done on Ryle Harris, our championship leader. Definitely not uh, not taking it easy in this last these last couple of laps. We see Ryle all over the back of him. With, uh, with Gary Baxter in behind. So it's a tight little battle pack here as we come into the last three laps of the race. He's a race three specialist, is Roel Harris. He's actually got Cam Wilson on the radio here this weekend. Cam not racing after that massive accident up at Surface Paradise. And sad to see that uh, he's not here, but teammate to Roel Harris. So he is at least calling the shots on pit lane for the potential champ. Yeah, real shame, Cam Wilson, one of the sport's great blokes. And as you see a replay here, Ryle Harris diving up the inside Jeez. of Wayne Wakefield. Big move for the championship leader, but Wayne Wakefield again on the exit, doing the, doing the over and under the crossover and back up the inside, headed down into turn nine. Yeah, and he's a very uh, aggressive racer in the Bacardi Oakfield Ute, so you're not going to try and hold on to that position. Oh, Ooh. no, the boat works to you. Your old Ute, mate. Into the wall in the hands of Michael Armand, Rare Spares replay. The young South Aussie going into the, the fence. We can see the engineer, Cliffy, he's uh, leaning in the window having a chat to Michael. Michael's got his hands up, he doesn't really know what happened there, but again, a promising weekend for, for a uh, V8 Utes rookie. Yep, he's graduated out of the GD3 Cup Challenge Series this year, where he did a very good job in the Porsches. There's Craig Dontis once again, circulating around this very cool circuit. Walking around this track, you get a real note of the history. We've got the cauldron, which Cathy Freeman lit, up there in the, the middle of Sydney Olympic Park. There's all these tiny little stadiums everywhere. If you've never been to this part of the world, it's a really historic moment or a historic place in Australian sport. Up there with the MCG is the most historic. Yeah, you see some amazing shots out of here with the ANZ Stadium in the background. And But Craig Donta is doing an amazing job to recover after that flat tyre we saw in race two. So he's actually doing an incredible job. Would have been good to see what he would have been capable of had he not had that, uh, that run in with the tyre early on. Through the chicanes once again. Oh, Fonzie Mullen. Not afraid to hike it over the curbs. Pushing that high-tech oils Commodore to the extreme. We'll also be seeing a bit of a change in the structure and the way this championship's run in the coming years. As uh, much, you know, 
not controversy, but we don't really know what's going to happen with the future of the Commodore and the Falcon, so we could be seeing a change in V8 supercars, and those changes will eventually end up at the Dunlop Series and the Utes as well. Well, it's actually amazing because the category managers, Ferex, have definitely got a plan for the future, and they're moving forward with, you know, trying to address just those concerns, and, and you know, this series is in great hands, and it'll be exciting to see where we end up in a couple of years. Chucky Baxter swerving all over the place, potentially trying to find a bit of the cooler air down Dawn Fraser Avenue, as George was alluding to earlier. It's very difficult out here. There's a man we haven't seen that much of this weekend, Elliot Barber, part of the Rookies with Jesse Dixon and Adam Marjoram, who's actually complaining of some brake issues in this race. Speaking of brake issues, is that Jack LeBrock? No, that was that, that was our, that was our new competitor, Dylan Thomas. So ah. he's, uh, he's, he's purchased the old Jack Ellsgood ute and he's back on the grid and it's really, really good to see that ute back out there. David Cedars, though, looking very strong on a final lap. I was actually at the test day where they shook down this first new car and right from the outset, the thing was a jet. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that, uh, you know, there's actually been some benefits come out of a little bit of that damage we saw. Yeah, it's silver lining, I think we call that. Yeah. yeah, they definitely killed one car up there on the, the big chicane part of the, the beach side of the circuit at Surface Paradise, but this one's come out of the box this weekend. He's landed the thing on pole. He was second in race one, and now he's going to swap that position around with Chris Walton for the final race of the weekend. He's just been there or thereabouts in the championship for the last couple of years now. Second last year, second the year before, potentially a third or fourth this year. He could have won it. He was leading the championship coming into the penultimate round before he uh, made that error and was penalised the points. He uh, regards this move into the V8 Utes as potentially one of the best uh, career moves he's ever made. We've seen him really come into his own in this championship and with a, a great host of corporate uh, partners and obviously the support of his family team. As we see Wakefield... Oh! oh! And contact contact contact. the last lap. Contact with Harris in his heart would have absolutely shot up into his throat then. It's put him back into the clutches of Gary Baxter. Everybody just took a deep breath for a second then because we weren't sure how that was going to pan out. A DNF at this stage, well, it's not really going to matter because Pretty's not going to go and win the race and claim the victory, but still. Mate, I was nervous just watching it. I can't believe he pulled that <laughs> off. Oh. So, and now he's run wide. That was Wakefield. That was Wakefield. He's run wide. And potentially Fencer thinks so. Maybe we're seeing brake issues as well for Wayne Wakefield. A few of these guys as the tap-out energy <laughs> unit as well. Struggling to get this thing. The chequered flag's already oh. out, believe it or not. But these guys are still warring until the season is completely done. Wow, you are killing me. All my fingernails gone. Massive slide across the finish line. Celebratory. He's pulled it off. I mean, well done. But, geez, did you have to make it so hard on yourself there, mate? Royal Harris joins the greats of the series in Warren Luff and Damian White as back-to-back -back winners. Grant Johnson also a two-time champion as David Cedars wraps up the final race of the championship, his fourth race win of the year. And would you believe it, we've ended the season with 12 wins for Ford and 12 wins for Holden. So Chris Walton, your event winner for the weekend, just three points up on David Seed is a good job to bounce back. And Nathan Pretty on the podium. Well, Chris, I know it's all about the championship, but for yourself, what a way to finish the year. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. To get the round win for the final round this year has been great. That's credit to the team, uh, the whole Renko setup. It's been brilliant. They've put in a big effort all year. To bring this home at the end has been great. NZ point score at the end of the year. Now, Reese McNally has been stripped of his race two win, which means Baxter claims a win for the final event for him. But more importantly, Ryle Harris is your series champ. Ryle Harris, defending champion. Back to back, it's got to be pretty special. Yeah, obviously over the moon. The team's done a great job with the car all year. We've had a consistent car. Hasn't quite been the quickest car, but, you know, we raced well and we just kept bagging the points every round. There was a moment in that third race, though. Yeah, my mate Wayne, old cap at Wakefield, uh, you know, he was running really well. I didn't want to pass him. I was just happy to sit behind him, and he had a bit of pace on board, so he had a really good start, and unfortunately got a flat tyre in the last lap. And the only mark I put on the car all weekend was from, from Wayne when he when he got a flat tyre in the last lap. But, you know, uh, other than that, we had a, probably the cleanest round we've ever had. The car looks mint, so it's great. Our SS Induction's hard charger, Gary McDonald. He had a crash in race one. They fix the thing in the short turnaround time. He comes out there and passes 12 cars in race number two. Elliot Barber is our Yokohama Rookie of the Year. Congratulations to him. He gets the test drive with Erebus Racing. Jesse Dixon in second, Adam Marjoram in third. But Chris Walton taking out the event for the weekend as he takes the award from Auto One up on the podium. And it's all about the tap-out energy, Ute. 
of Royal Harris, a two-time champ and back-to-back -back a fantastic year for this young man and who knows what the future holds. Will he be back next year? We certainly will be. We cannot wait to see you again on the streets of Adelaide. The Utes will be there, don't you worry about that at the Clips All 500. It's been a great year thanks to George Mediki and the entire production team. We'll see you next season for the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All.